Let's do this. Yo, Cam, what's up, bud? Nice to meet you, man. Hey, what's up? Nice to meet you, too. I am now... Try not to get too into the weeds, right? Be adaptable, you know? There you go. Oh, I'm going to close my door. Can we get Mumu in here? You think we can get Mumu in here? Or that's not? All right. Go get your wife. Go get your. Go get your. Uh, go get your. Uh, my wife. Oh, so now you gonna say it's my wife. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> I will go get my wife. I will. I, I, you you bought her. You bought her for the permanent contract sign. You feel me? <laughs> Yo. Ah uh, uh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> the contract is signed. I'm out of color. I'm out of color. I call white first. Oh yeah, go ahead then, go ahead then. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> the synchronicity. <laughs> Nice. All right. My name is Cameron, also known as Cameron Runs. I thought it was creative back in the day. I ran track in college, so I decided to use that little username. I didn't actually make it. I, I stole it. Are you um, on to be honest? No. Um, Legit. <laughs> wait, what? Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I I just, there was a long silence because we, we were waiting for Cameron's, right? Thanks for interrupting my introduction, Shane. <laughs> I have no. I have, I have stopped streaming. I am not going to stream this. I'm actually going to exit and come back in. Okay, I shall continue. Of course, of course. So, mental health, public of community mental health day. Mental health is important to me specifically because I know what it's like to have my mental health be it like what I would consider like optimal. I also know what it's like for it to be at its very lowest point um, to the point of like. I'm just going to say it how it is, like suicide, like the lowest, the lowest I ever thought I could, I didn't even think I could ever be 
in that situation. And so for me, it's a matter of like life or death for people, you know, and if it's something that we choose not to talk about, then it's something we, it's a health component of life that we choose to ignore. And I believe we can't ignore it. All right, introduction, and then, all right, so my name's Johnny. I am a psychedelic healer. I am a disabled veteran. I have a PTSD and bipolar one, and I found uh, mental health. I found wellness in psychedelics. Uh, specifically, I take a form of ayahuasca to, to maintain my wellness, and uh, it's a very, very powerful anti, anti, uh, antidepressant. It's, it's the reason that I'm as well as I am today. A year ago, that wasn't the case. He was talking about suicide. That's me, man. That's me. And, and, and so with suicide, so some people have this really negative, it's like you're a coward, you're doing these things to other people, but all you really want is for the pain to stop, right? You're, just, you're looking for relief from the pain. So if you've never been there, try not to judge others who struggle, you know, because all we want is relief, man. It's our traumas are fucking destroying us, right? And so I, I got into psychedelics. I was looking for relief from the depression for all the shit that, I, that I'm fucked up, man. I'm, I'm aware of it. I'm fucked up. And I found a great deal of wellness. Like, I'm I'm happy. Right? I'm talking about some, some, some sad shit right now, but I'm a happy person because of the things that I do, the meditations that I'm in. I am a shaman. I heal people. That's what I do. I'm a healer. And so what this community, mental health, uh, why is it so important? I'm a veteran with PTSD. I was in a three-month-long PTSD unit with my, with my brothers, you know? And uh, we have a saying, vets heal vets, right? In the community, like, when we come together as brothers, like, there's nothing more comforting to just hearing your, your brother tell a story about how he's struggling, too. Right, and that's that, that community that because that, you, you guys shed blood in the same mud, you know, and so so when you just that sense of not being alone in your struggle is so healing, right? Just just having a part of someone, someone to just be there with you in that struggle is comforting, you know, and so that's why community mental health is so important, man. Because in that community is where you find your right, you come together. And it's I love veteran communities, man, because we 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 build each other up and we fucking we help each other grow and heal. It's so beautiful. I have videos when I was in the PTSD. I have, I have videos of me and my brothers on the loading docks playing. The, guitar and singing and shit like we're, we're veterans we have deep traumas and shit like we're really fucked up right so bring life and love just being good you know? that's why community mental health is so important because it lift us up so high hi everybody can everyone hear me okay Okay, good to be with you all. Uh, my name is Peter, and mental health is near and dear to me. Um, in my personal and somewhat in my professional life, from here I'll speak from the personal life, a lot of people that I love and care about, um, mental health is important to them. It's also important to me. Uh, I know we all have felt um, there's a lot happening in our world today, whether it's COVID, uh, world events, or uh, not being able to access the services and supports that we need to have various things addressed, including mental health. So I've always been a proponent of really trying to lift these conversations, not just for myself, but for others. I also have, uh, my brother passed away. He was homeless for a long time, and um, he came to live with my family and me the last three years of his life. We got him house. He passed away because of uh, uh, COPD, but he, he battled uh, mental health conditions for over 30 years. He was homeless most of that time. So, um, you know, the complexities of trying to take people where they are and trying to adapt supports so that you meet the needs of the person rather than what the system says you should do is important to me. Right. And I'll talk more as we go forward, uh, but I think that works. For, I think that's kind of compatuates why I'm here today. Work. Work. Thank you. Rainy Metro, thank you yeah, for thank joining you us. Um, it's always a blessing oh, to have you. Uh, are you down? I was here for a bit. 
are you are, are you down to do a little introduction and speak about why um, the topic of community mental health is important to you? Uh, way to put me on the spot with such a uh, brief and uh, simplistic question. Welcome to the podcast, homie. Right. How, how well-being is connected and that we're all part of an environment, kind of. Mm-hmm. And, and how um, what we do with our fosters, what other people get. And what other people get fosters what we get. Feedback loops. Right? Right on. Feedback loops. Life is a feedback loop. And the fact that you live with somebody else and the fact that you see them day to day isn't just a process. Well, it is a process, but it's also an exponential curve. Like, take take the... I'll, I'll get to mental health. If you talk about, say, I don't know, meeting your neighbor for the first time, how much detail do you get with each... You know, exposure, like when you bump into each other on the street, and then once you bump into each other about three or four times, you know, what what changes? Like, you know, you, you stack information, and then you start building parallels, and then, you, you know, like, that, it's the same way with our mental health. It's like, what am I, and how do I feel, and why? And then how does that, base, based on tomorrow, what am I doing? And the coalescing... Sorry, I'm not even looking at chat. I'm just wandering. Yeah. The question I was, I, like, why, why is the conversation mm-hmm. of mental health important to you? It's it's important to me because um, uh, I don't want to blame culture too heavily. I will say a judgmental finger. Um, I'm Asian. I think that's a key distinction here. That's mm-hmm. the simplest way to put it. But I'm Eastern. Okay. I'm more. Where, where? I'm, I'm from a far land, quite literally. You know, I'm like the closest thing you guys still have to a bona fide European descendant that isn't a bastard modernized <laughs> child. You know, there there are no true Englishmen, or whatever the say. All right. You know? All right. So uh, Shane, welcome to the podcast. So far off. Shane, would you like to take a moment Hi. to uh, introduce yourself and talk about why the conversation of community mental health is important to you? Uh, first of all, thank you everyone for sharing all of their stories and what is important in their values and things like that because that's so beautiful. I'm, I'm so amazed at, human, at humans, you know? Um, okay, so my name is Shane. What was the? Is the, are you? What do you want from me? The just the answering that question. What does what does mental health mean uh, to me? What, what does community? Why is the conversation of community mental health important oh. to you? Okay, the conversation for community. <laughs> the conversation oh, wow. for to, to the. Oh, hold on. The conversation on community mental health mm-hmm. needs to be had in order to take the next step of action Word. action not just talk but action Beautiful. and strategy everything anyway i'll end it there i'm done next person Beautiful. all right uh taxis thank you for joining Hi, the podcast thank you i uh, appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here and, and share my feelings on mental health um my name is chad i go by taxes uh i, I stream and i'm involved in the gaming community under that name Giga um, chad. mental health is important to me community mental health in particular is important to me because um because there are so many people that struggle with it, it don't stop. we gotta go down there and probably hey g bear they, hey g bear can you do me a favor and mute your mic if you're going to be talking while other people on the podcast are speaking? Thank you. Go ahead, Taxis. Thank it. you. Sure. Um, it's it's important because for us to understand each other better, we have to understand where we each come from. Mm-hmm. There has to be some compassion that that is involved in all of this. People have to learn to empathize, and it is something that can be learned. It comes easy to some, but not others. But it can be learned. Um 
and mental health really kind of determines our physical health, our spiritual health, um, our community health altogether. Um, and I, and I think there is a, an awakening that's taking place in not just, uh, American culture, but world culture as mm -hmm. well, uh, mm -hmm. about the importance of that. Uh, it, it's something that, that here in the U S we're just really now starting to work into, uh, even in the last five years, oh, yeah. uh, the last two years, particularly, yeah. um, that it, it's, people are starting to realize that it's not an isolated experience. This is something your neighbor has dealt with more than likely. This is something mm -hmm. that, um, 20%, according to, uh, the CDC, 20% of adults live with a mental illness, a chronic mental illness. Uh, and, and that can be something as, um, as common as depression. Uh, and that can range up to some of the more severe uh, mental difficulties that people deal with. Right. Um, and, and there's no shame in that. And that's, that's a huge thing. That's a big component to the community mental health aspect is the shame and shedding that and helping each other shed that yeah. coming together putting our arms around each other and saying, Hey, I got you, man. I've been there. I know what it's like, or I am sorry. You're going through that. Let me walk with you and, and getting that support. And as the community, um, and, and by community, I just mean humankind, as we all start to understand that on a better level, there's going to be a lot of healing that takes place. There's going to be a lot of trauma that's exposed mm -hmm. and, it's got to happen for our well-being. It yeah. has to. Thanks, for, thanks for coming to the podcast. That was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks, brother. Thank wanna, you for sharing dude, that. Thanks, wait, Max. wait, that was taxes. Can I? The, the global thing, right? It's like the world's yeah, yeah. getting smaller and seconds are getting short. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so here... It's like every moment we have, you gotta grab. And you gotta you gotta find yourself. Kind of. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I'm done. I'm done. Word. I'm done. Uh, also, Go on. hey Rainy, do Sorry. me a favor. When you're not talking, can you mute mute your mic so we're not getting background noise, please? So here is uh here's my question to y'all to discuss, and uh, we're gonna keep this loose. Try not to talk over each other. If if you want to talk, hold your hand up, and I'll make sure to point to 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 give you time to speak. So here's the question I want to put forth for y'all to consider. What, in your perspective, is the distinction or is there a distinction between individual mental health and community mental health? Shane, you want to go first? Okay. <sighs> Yes, I was guided into this room by the vibe. Hell yeah. Right? Yeah. So I am one of those people of the few who follow the vibe 159 million percent of the time. <laughs> and it, I, it, but here's the thing. Someone like me, I don't have exactly true free will. I don't have true free will. Anyway, That's yes, that is, what, that, is, okay, that is what I struggle with. Okay, let's say I have a talent of connecting with people. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, I have a talent with connecting with people and connecting people mm -hmm. together. That is my great talent. I know how to do that. But um, that those connections can only be had through what? Communication. Mm -hmm. So once you have all the dots, like let, let's if, here. If you have um, this, I have to do this. Uh, okay, here. You have people. People, see, here's me. Sorry, here's me a circle. Oh, wait. Yeah, here's me. Here's you. Here's Legit. Here's Rainy. Here's everybody's all in their own universe, their own world. Yep, yep. Because the, the bounds of your imagination are limitless sure. so you do have a galaxy of thought in your brain but anyway um so these are you individually now the only way to connect these dots physically is through a line of something physical mm -hmm. and 
is something that obeys the laws of physics. Mm -hmm. So what that is, is communication and communication can indeed connect every pathway possible to every person. Scientifically, you can make a connection with every person you want and remain in that connection. Therefore you have like-minded people and there is something that's called group flow. Mm -hmm. So whenever you have a group of people that are in the state of flow, that is very powerful and must be uh, achieved by the right people. Okay. Follow up question for you, Shane, to dovetail off of one. Uh, first of all, I, I, I personally hear what you said and agree with you. Uh, yeah. I, I think I said, Here, here's a follow up question though. Is all, okay. is, is all communication conscious? <sighs> no, because you have uh, Twitch streamers. Uh, I'm sorry. I just have to say these words. You have, um, you know, like revealing and, uh, and dancing or whatever Twitch streamers who do this for money, uh, for a living mm -hmm. to people who may be or may not be a simp. And if they think that this woman is communicating with them individually, but she's not, then there's a problem. There's a mental health problem there. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, look, it happened to me. I spent $2,000 on a Twitch streamer because mm -hmm. I was communicating with her through money and she was responding to it with her words, but it got to the point where uh, something got toxic. It wasn't, Exactly. Anyway, that's a long story. I don't want to go down that. Uh, yeah, it's not. Yeah, we don't have to go all the way down there. I just wanted to get your perspective on whether, because you made the point that in order to connect each of our universes, we have to communicate. So it takes an action. It takes an action of communication. Right. Yes. But if not all communication is conscious, then that means there can be unconscious commun uh, communications and unconscious connections, right? Oh well, yeah, like body language and things like that. It has to be physical. It has to be physical. Uh, ta taxes. Do you? Uh, did you want to speak? Did you have your hand up? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, remind me of the question. Sorry. So, uh, what is the distinct? What is? Or is there a distinction between individual mental health and community he mental health? And what is the distinction if there is? I I believe there is a distinction. Okay. Um, and that distinction is changing. Um, for. For me individually, um, my my mental health is a personal thing. Mm -hmm. It is, unless I choose otherwise, it is only experienced by me. Mm. Uh, and I say that in a limited sense. There are there are actions that can come out of my mental health issues um, that do affect other people, mm -hmm. but that is all as a result of whatever I'm internalizing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so I think in one respect, it is very, uh, individual mental health is very different from community mental health. Community mental health can be a shared state. Mm -hmm. um, if you have many people in the same area, region, whatever, who are experiencing similar mental health effects, uh, and this has been documented, mm -hmm. um, it, can, it can be a result of environmental traumas. Mm -hmm. It can be a result of shared experiential trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, e even even household mental health can be community mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my family, my immediate family, uh, the other three members of my family um, have kind of come to grips with this over the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think many of us have uh, in that way because of our um, shared experience with, uh, with the pandemic. Mm. Um, we were exposed to less outside and the internal pressures, whether individual or household community or larger community, um, those experiences ha have shaped our recent uh, mental health. Got it. Um, the, the community mental health aspect isn't, it also isn't necessarily a shared state of mental health. But what about your mental health that you share with other people? I've become much more open about my mental health experiences because I saw 
the effect that it had on other people, helping them to realize that they're not alone, that they don't have to be afraid, that there are other people out there like them, and that they don't, that that isolation is a mental health issue on its own. Mm -hmm. And and to come alongside somebody else and put your arm around them and say, we got this. Consensual. You You are not. Yes, absolutely. Consensually. Yeah. That, that is a key piece of that. Right. Uh, and putting your arm around them, you know, in a, in a metaphorical sense, anyway. Um, without their consent, nothing good can happen. Right, right. Uh, okay, they, they will. Yeah, sorry, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I thought you were. Doing... No, you're good. Okay, so uh, Cameron, I saw your hand up and then I saw Rainey's hand up. So Cameron, let's go to you. Yeah, well, train taxes. Thank you for like sharing your points of view. Um, it's like helped me to be able to construct further what like I wanted to say. Um, but okay, so the question was the distinction between uh, individual health and community mental health. No, no, and I no, think what's the distinction? There's, between, there's, there's, between between individual mental health and community individual mental yeah and community mental health so i'd say there's there's definitely a distinction um with the two like individual is like my own personal everyone is going through their own personal journey their own personal experience and i relate it to like this is the connection that i make so i think of the brain the human brain so i think of individual neurons Mm -hmm. And I think of like synapses this is super nerdy, but I think of I synapses love it. I love it. Uh, kind of kind of branching off. So it's like that neuron by itself is not very effective. But when that neuron begins to branch out to other neurons and gr- creates a bunch of connections with the other neurons, then solutions are created. So individually, I think individual health is like, okay, the recognition of like, I have something going on but the solution i think personally is already given to us it's already it's already there um it's the connection with other people who are going through um things in a similar situation even even different it's the people who we think that we have nothing in common with um and it's showing us that like the whole entire world is interconnected Facts. Rainy, uh, you had your hand up. Rainy, did you want to speak on this uh, this point, this this aspect of the topic? Yeah, I will. I wanted to thank Johnny for bringing up isolation, mm. and I can make it short and sweet. The wind. Um, I'm walking backwards to avoid the wind. I swear, I'm logical. I swear. <laughs> um, there's nothing. There's no sound more harsh than. Sweet. You know? that's, that's my piece. Okay. Bye. So the uh, was that it? You just wanted to uh, thank him about that one point. All right. So um, it sounds you, was, it sounds to me, and and if anybody wants to raise their hand about this, I'll, I'll call on you in a second. But it sounds to me like uh, what is being brought up, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm misconstruing anybody's points that that, that, that anybody's brought up so far. But uh, individual mental health and community mental health are connected, although they're not exactly the same. Yes. And they can affect each other. Does that, does that track with everybody? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, and way to way to sum it up, dude. That was great. <laughs> okay, uh, RN R, uh, K- K- Cateract says nice. we all have one thing in common in chat, and that's being human. Ife Asa says I believe there is a distinction, but the mental health of a community does not contribute to individual mental health, and individual mental health can collectively impact community mental health too. Agreed. So those are some points from chat. Thank you, Ife. Uh, Ife was planning on joining us today, but she's in Ghana, so the infrastructure there makes it really difficult to get online 
with with uh, with uh, what's the word with um, stability, right? So hats off to you, Ife, for showing up in chat. Thank you. Um, so the uh, before before we move on, I just want to check in with everybody else. If any if anybody else wants to speak on this point, if there's any if if there's a distinction between individual and community mental health. Is everybody good on this? Is it going to be cool to move on? Or did anybody have anything they wanted to get out? Can I say one? Oh, oh did Peter have something to say? Oh, Peter, please. Lay, lay some Peter. on us. Uh, you know, I think it's also a challenge as we help others in our community. Or maybe having some really difficult time. And I, was, uh, I really appreciate everyone's comments. Um. And isolation, as was mentioned, is important, too, because in my world, I talk to people, many who have disability, of a variety of different disabilities, and I have a, uh, someone I'm trying to assist mm -hmm. who's been in bed for three years mm -hmm. because not being able to get uh, reliable caregiving. So I was on the phone with him recently, and he was really in depth. Of uh, kind of despair, and I was trying to work, help him, at least for that time, be okay, and see what we can do. And then I found myself having to sort of work on my own uh, feelings because it kind of brought me to places. Mm. So I'm trying to say, probably not as eloquently as you all said, that I think it's separate sexual, as we were saying, um, but in particular, I want to call out those of all of us here are involved in helping other folks. And I'm just trying to say why it's, that it's really important that we acknowledge that that's a factor too mm. in our mental health. Mm -hmm. I also want to just mention separate related um, mental health related conditions or disabilities, whatever term you want to use are not ex as accepted. For example, I have cerebral palsy. So I use a power wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And because of my disability, I have limited use of my arms and legs. So everything I do, I do with the assistance of someone else or assistive technology. Okay? So I honor those who help me. But somebody else with a mental health disability can also need services to be okay or to have their um, disabilities respected. I have a privilege that um, many folks that I know don't have. If I tell somebody I need a ramp to get in, they go, oh, yeah. But if somebody with a mental health disability needs to be accepted where they are or needs a service, that's not validated by society like it should be. That's one of the things that I'm trying to both personally and as part of the collective really raise up. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, Johnny, I see your hand up real quick. I'm going to read off this uh, comment in chat. Helena 2003 says, completely agree, Ife. Individual and community mental health interlink and are ever-changing each impacting the other to such a great extent, which I think is a beautiful summation of things. Johnny, please uh, go ahead. Okay, so what, to, uh, to what Peter was talking to, <clears throat> um, it, it, the mental health crisis in this country is such that uh, when I was, when things fell apart for me in 2018, we tried to find help and it was a six to eight week wait. I was ready to kill myself then. I was ready to go. I was done with this shit, you know? And they told me I had to wait six or eight weeks. I didn't have 10 minutes, and I'd wait almost two months, man. So one of the things that I do, and I'm not a mental health professional, right? I'm, I'm a shaman. I have I do psychedelic type shit, man. I'm not a real healthcare professional. It should, I, I, the, the things I do works, but I don't. So don't listen to me like I'm a doctor. Mm -hmm. But I, sometimes with just like, and this is just, just really like just being part of a good friend, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do one-on-one -on -one sessions with my friends, right? Because not everybody has access to mental health care. And so just as individuals, right? So we're not trained therapists, right? So that's what I'm trying to get. We're not, we're not trained therapists, but just being good to each other, right? And to, sh to show love, to take some time out of your day and to sit with a friend and just, and just listen to them. And not just listen to the shit they're saying. Like, I'll give you an example of something that happened recently. I had a friend who was talking about rearranging her room, right? 
mm-hmm. but it wasn't that like, that's like a compulsive thing for us like no be like why why is this why is this triggering like what's what's deeper than that like why what's going on what like what control don't you have in your life that you're ex- exercising control like this in your life like what's going on babe mm-hmm. and then she told me then she then we had a really long conversation about that right she cried and shit it was very healing for her right but so when i say listen to your friends don't just oh so you're in your room those mm-hmm. people are telling you shit for a reason man listen to your friends and, and when you listen from a place of love you'll hear you'll heal you will hear how they are hurt mm-hmm. and you will understand right mm-hmm. so that's what so that's what i do sometimes so if you're someone like you just don't have uh, access to mental health just be a good friend like i do one-on-one sessions with my homies all the time man and sometimes all you do is just sit and listen, and that's it. Hey, I have a question for you, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. What's up, brother? What if, what if? Okay, now in the game of survival, it's not even a game. It's it's survival. You have to, you have to hold yourself as number one because if you don't provide for yourself, if you don't take care of yourself first, you yeah. won't be able to provide for the people underneath yourself. Um. So to kind of, I had a I had a question for you. You said something at the end of your. At the end of your oh, man, oh, I just lost. No, no. I just it's, lost it. No then, uh, that's okay, man. You know, one of the yeah. things uh, I wanted to, uh, G Bear, did you have something you wanted to say, bro? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready when y'all are ready for me to come in. I ain't gonna lie, I've been dealing with a lot in real life right now. Don't hold me accountable for that. But I'm back, y'all. You feel me? Yo, it's all good. Yeah, speak your mind, please. Did you have something you wanted to? So say? next time, huh? Did you? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, like, well, and, and I know the topic is uh, community health, and I apologize, you know, I'm in and out right now, but I'm back in, like I said. Uh, if you can, this next round, I'm going, so you're going to wrap me up on the whole, you know what I'm saying? Do and then, want, boom. Do you want me to give you a, a do you, okay, so the topic that, yeah, we, let me get the, the, the point that we were just talking about is, uh, is there a distinction between individual <clears throat> mental health and community mental health? Yes. <laughs> Big difference. Do you want me to answer that? Uh, yeah, tell me your thoughts on it. My thoughts is individual health is more so, of course, what well, we know that it's, it's when you, it's, it, you, know, it's, you know, it's your own health, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's when you're worrying about, of course, what you got going on, which is important, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. community health is, is also individual health because through you helping your community, you help all the individuals, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's reaching a broad statement. And I feel like through working on your community mm-hmm. health, you draw like, you help you heal yourself in the in the process. You know what I'm saying? Mm. As far as mental health. Beautiful. You know that's that's that actually right there. Uh, I want to recap some of the good points that y'all just made, and I want to start with that one. When when you heal your community, you heal yourself, right? But then also what what uh, what Shane brought up is when you have to heal yourself if oh. you are going to heal anybody else, right? That's 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 a fact. That's that's a fact. That's a, that's the feedback, yeah. me, right? That reminded well, me, Johnny Chainsaws. Whenever matter of fact, I agree, but then I don't agree, kind of on that point of that you can't heal, like, cause cause you can be harmed and you can be damaged yourself and be now. Of course, now that's not the best type of help. No, I'm not trying to point out to nobody, but you got a lot of TikTokers out here that be all men is this and or women, niggas be like, I mean, men be like, women is this, but they don't even got no relationship and they don't know how to handle themselves in a relationship. That I agree with you. Them people cannot sit here and be trying to help people when they can't even help themselves but sometimes you know the issues that you deal with are issues that your community deal with Mm -hmm. and and i feel like even if you have not healed the problem or issue yourself the fact that you are tackling a problem you and you healing your your community you're going to be healed as a process and it can be it can be for you and for you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. through you know you get what i mean yeah yeah g-bear nice (laughs) So, uh, Johnny, uh, I wanted to uh, uh, dovetail on something you said as well. You, you, first of all, you made up a point to make the clear distinction. You know, I'm not a health professional. I'm not a doctor. Much respect. You know, that's a good, important distinction for any of us to make when we're stepping into these realms of talking about taking our own healing and our community's healing into our own hands. And the reason that you put forth for consideration, and I think people would agree here, that this is important is because... <laughs> As you pointed out, our systems are taxed all to heck right now. They they are at bare minimum slow as hell. That even assumes they're effective when you even get the services. So it, it's becoming a matter of survival for us to take this into our own hands, right? That's why at bare minimum, just talking about this with each other is going to move something, right? Develop the capacity as individuals and as a community to heal. Right? Does that check out with everybody? Anybody opposed to anything I just said? 
We good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I just brother. I think I think a diplomatic approach to this is best in order. Truth. Delicacy. Yeah, yeah. Correct? Being like delicate. Because we're dealing with trauma. The conversation is inherently trauma. Yeah. Right? And you can yeah. you can mess someone up with the best intentions. <clears throat> So really, the, the burden falls on us as being good people to show love to our friends and take that space and hold a space of love for them to to, mm-hmm. to have these conversations and so they can be better, even, you know? Because if you hold all that even, shit inside, man, like that that's that's that's, that's that comes with emotional invalidation that we experience as men in this country, right? Mm-hmm. A large part of our experience is emotional invalidation in our entire lives. We hold all that shit inside, man. Mm-hmm. That's the unhealthiest thing a person can do to themselves. That is the unhealthiest thing you can do is hold all your shit inside. And that's what we get taught all the time, man. It's only until recently that it's become okay to be okay with your emotions and shit. And to be honest with you, a large part of uh, dealing with your traumas is just being at peace with your emotions and not being mad at them. Like, why, like fuck, fuck, I hate being mad or I hate being sad all the time. Mm. Just be at peace with that shit, man. Just there's no judgment emotions. They just are what they are. They're part of who you are. And the sooner you can, you, you can accept that, the, the happier you'll be. But that's how you get past your traumas and shit, man. Yep. Taxus, I saw Heck your hand up, and then I saw Rainy. I saw your hand up. So Taxus, did you want to go ahead? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, G Bear, I think, really hit the nail on the head when he was talking about g- making sure your mental health is in a good place. Um, but I also want to uh, maybe expound on that a little bit in that you don't have to be perfectly healed to be able to help other people. No. You want to be in a healthier spot, absolutely. Uh, it, it, because it's a process. It's there. Rarely are you ever going to find somebody who feels like, yes, I'm done. I am finished and I am 100% healed. That, that is a very rare thing. There's always more to uncover. There's always extra trauma to come to terms with or to even realize existed. Um, I, I uncovered some, some, I came to the realization of something, uh, myself, uh, that I don't want to get into the details of, but I came to realize, wow, this was a trauma and this affected the last 30 years of my life. Mm. I, I was astonished, you know, but because of, um, I'm going to use a phrase here, but I want to clarify the phrase because of ta- toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I was expected to be okay with what happened. Yep. And, and I, I don't, believe that toxic masculinity is a very accurate word. I think that's a big misnomer. I think there are toxic aspects of being a man that we are taught and expected to have. Mm -hmm. And those masculinity itself is not toxic. Not inherently. Just like a brick is not dangerous. Yes, not inherently toxic. Um, But there is healthy masculinity and then there is toxicity applied to certain masculine traits. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, um, and I'll, I'll come right out and say it. I, I do want to give maybe a trigger warning for anybody who's listening. Thank you. When I was uh, 13, 14, I don't remember the specific age, I was taken advantage of by a girl who was an adult. She was 18. Mm. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, essentially, whether her intention or not, I was raped. I thought that was what I was supposed to want. Mm-hmm. I thought, but but 13 or 14, I had no, there was no reason for me to have wanted that. That was unhealthy. And that is a cultural expectation. That is a masculine expectation. Um, but in the last couple of years, just talking with a therapist, talking with uh, some very, very close friends, realizing If that was my daughter in that situation, the roles were reversed. Mm -hmm. A 13-year-old girl and an 18-year-old boy, absolutely 100%. That's rape. Mm -hmm. Statutory rape. That girl cannot make that decision for herself Mm -hmm. with any clear mind because of a lack of experience, maturity, any number of other things. Yeah, and even bringing these things up. When I realized that, my jaw just dropped. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge trauma that I didn't even realize was a trauma for 30 years. And uncovering that has helped me become more healthy, and I've been able to share that when appropriate, when I have a relationship with somebody and have established a friendship and a, an understanding with them that can help them. Mm-hmm. Thank you for... Um, and, uh, and, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
No, you're okay. Well, I, just um, wanted, I wanted to thank you for, for, for being brave, right? In, in, thank you for that. Um, and it's a shame that being able to say that out loud is considered brave. It's true. It's true. We need to be able to, when you're in a good place and ready to share something like that, you need to be able to share that kind of stuff yeah. in a safe place. Yeah with safe people. Thank you for trusting us. Thank and ex you for being it, it, explore that. Sure. Thank you for, uh, for, for bearing with me through that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I've really, I, I can't say I've completely healed from that, but I've come to terms with that in a very good and healthy way uh, mm -hmm. over some time. Um, and, and sorry, all of that side road to, to kind of bring up a, a phrase that um, I've been, that I've heard for a while now, and, and some of you I'm sure have heard it too, hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. yeah. If somebody is hurting, they are more likely to lash out, to respond, even reactionarily to an outside stimuli. Mm -hmm. That outside stimuli often being other people. And when you have that hurt, you are more likely to do that to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And when somebody hurts you, if you can, stop for a second and say, why did that happen? Is there some potential hurt that this person's dealing with? And, and mm -hmm. try to use that as a catalyst to empathize with that person and mm -hmm. see them as a person. Mm -hmm. You talk about compassion, sounds like. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Compassion. Empathy. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, before we move uh, on, I, I just want to say love in action. Yeah. Love and yeah. Uh, but before we move on, I just want to like really bracket around what you just said. Some of the core utilities, like the gold of where this conversation goes. Right. It, it's, it's, yep. it's really peeling, Absolutely. peeling off these ancient ass scabs and finding this yes. trauma that like, I can tell you without going into my story, I can relate to what you talked about to the trauma that you shared. I have a similar trauma in my life and I bet you I'm not sure. the only one, you know, I bet you there's a lot. I bet you there are a lot of, a lot of men who have that, who don't right. even realize that um, that was a fact. I'm, I'm going to read a little bit in chat real quick. Um, cause there's a bunch of people who have been speaking. So R N K T Ratch, who's, who's a resident nurse. She's speaking on, um, on services. She says, uh, exam perfect example of services being slow. Cause that's what we're talking about. I took OSHA, she's a resident nurse. I took OSHA 18 months to respond to COVID. I'm not exaggerating. The organization responsible for occupational health took over a year to respond with guidelines. Delayed is an understatement. Then she says, we have to help each other. We cannot rely on organizations to do it. Absolutely. And then she also spoke on, when you brought up toxic masculinity, she brought up the, blah, the fact that there's also toxic femininity which I think expands the conversation that really we can start mapping toxicity in our culture. Really? Yes. You know? Um, and then she also said, I feel bad for bullies because I know they are hurting. Right. Um, okay. So I saw rainy, your hand was up and then I saw, um, uh, Shane, your hand was up. So rainy, go ahead, please. And then we'll go to you, uh, Johnny after, uh, Shane. So go ahead, Rainy. Sorry, just give me a moment to collect my thoughts because I. Do you want a moment? We'll go to Shane. Man, this is heavy. This is heavy. Oh yeah, um... we don't fuck around around here. I don't know if any of y'all realize that before <laughs> getting in here. <laughs> this ain't about no clicks. This is about real life. This is about actually generating healing capacity because we have to. We have to. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. So, but, um, go ahead, Rainy. Disclaimer. Mm -hmm. You might disagree with this one point. Um, not all projection yeah, is, like, true. inherently I, I, I told him. dysfunctional, I guess. Okay. Okay. So, so the, uh, I'll elaborate. Um, Because when you when you communicate something, you're projecting an idea onto someone, and then it's either it's either up to them to get the grasp of it, 
or to completely misunderstand and just assume what you're saying is what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that, that that's a whole thing about communication, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you could argue that you, there's majors on that, so I'm not gonna digress. Um, but the thing about what, um, fuck masculinity. Yes, yes, toxic masculinity is like, yes, there's aspects to it, um, but can I get some help? What was the point before toxic masculinity? Johnny, do you remember? Oh, well, we, I were, don't know. we were talking about a lot of stuff. No, we were talking not. about toxicity in yeah. general. And uh, we were also talking mm -hmm. about um, the systems that I are failing us that we need to kind of meet from our own our own meeting. Do you want some time oh. to get? Oh, go ahead. Get, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, we are all, a, a, a house is only as strong as its foundations. Right? And we all live in this house that is a society. And we are the pillars of our own society. So if we're not comfortable, if we're not strong and, and um, healthy in our beliefs, what are we projecting onto other people? Mm. And if our, our communicated ideas are flawed, then what are we mm. expecting other people to understand? Got it. Beautiful. Beautifully well put. I, that's I, I, that's, I, that was great. that's incredibly well put. Yeah, that was very well put. Shane, uh, you had your hand up. Uh, I can't hear you. Cannot oh, now you can. Now right? I can hear you. Now I can hear you. Bro, bro, I interrupted the conversation like eight times. <laughs> listen, uh, uh, listen. Okay. I, this, I, if, yeah, I have, if I can just say something productive, I just want to say something productive. Okay, this I, I don't know what your idea of the podcast is. You might have a, a vision of the past, a vision of the future, or a vision of the present moment. I highly recommend that we talk with Peter has done it. Uh, I've done it. And the third person did it. Who's I think G Bear got into the to the current real life stuff that's happening right in the present moment mm -hmm. and the things that we can do something about because I don't want to just be someone who talks about it. Mm -hmm. I want to raise awareness effectively mm -hmm. and I want to actually take action Absolutely. and or, or somehow somehow I don't know. Well, so, I'm just so, driven. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. So well, I feel like without um, it, it could be a heavy burden to expect everybody to come up with answers right away. So what I would encourage you is to take this into the Discord where we can start codifying these things, right? Ah, uh, you, you know I mean? okay. Would anybody be willing to help me, absolutely, assist me in doing absolutely, that? Absolutely, absolutely. But right now I'd like to keep the flow of the podcast. Codifying the efforts we can Yeah, the flow of the podcast, I got you. Yeah. Sometimes... Then, yeah, we could take yeah, this into know. the podcast. I already have some ideas that I've been ruminating on that I'd like to put forth for people to talk about, but I don't want to go into them right now. I want to I want to stick with the podcast flow because this is a marathon, not a not a sprint. And if we, if we it could yeah. it could be really easy to just demand things to happen right away, right? Oh no, I knew that. Nerd. So in the in the meantime, uh, I saw who had their hand up. Just want to make sure I didn't miss anybody before hey, oh, Johnny. Uh, wait, no, Peter, Peter, Peter. Uh, John, Joe, Johnny had his, and then Peter. Uh, Johnny, are you okay? If Peter goes so real quick because go. he has to run. I think. Yeah, good. Go ahead, yeah, Peter. Good. I agree that we should take action as far as moving forward and talk about it in the um, platform. But I think this is an important conversation that's free flowing, so that we can really talk about. Some of the things that are concerned to us to really advance and raise this conversation regarding with all else. I also think that this is a safe place when we need to honor one another like we have been doing for sharing things that are really um, near and dear and sometimes painful mm -hmm. that we'll be sharing. So I just want, you know, we can talk about the way we honor folks or the words we use, but it's really the intent is to really build folks up and really um, appreciate everything they're saying and validating folks because this platform, well, I'm kind of giving my opinion, so let me say it differently. Your opinion's welcome. Okay. You know, really has to, and it is doing that. 
and I talk about things that are painful and concern, but also lift folks up. You, uh, did you drop out? What happened? No, I... Okay. I actually ended there. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. This is a good space to be talking about things. Uh, Johnny, go ahead. You had your hand up? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to a point that uh, the tax made where he said to hurt people hurt people. I just, I'm going to talk about some spirituality real quick uh, and about suffering, right? Because there's this perception and some schools of philosophy teach that we're here to suffer and all existence is suffering and shit. And then we have like free will, right? So the way free will enacts suffering is that we're mean to each other right because engaging with low vibration emotions and and uh, it's very easy to do that type of shit right so that's how free will manifests suffering right it's when we're mean we're nasty we hurt each other we literally inflict the most suffering on each other than anything else on this planet we are the cause of our own fucking suffering and all we have to do is just be good to each other and all that shit goes away man all that shit goes away we're not we're not here to suffer that's not why god put us here the god that i know the one that I experienced when I go on my beautiful and have my beautiful, beautiful experiences. The God that I know is a God of love. And what he wants us to do is celebrate love. He didn't put us here to fucking suffer, man. That's evil. The, the God that I know, he didn't put us here to suffer. He put us here to celebrate love. Like, imagine every day you wake up, you put on your best fucking clothes. You go out with your best fucking friends and you go to a fucking wedding to people that you love most in the world. And you do that every single day. The God that I know wants us to do that every single fucking day. We're here to celebrate love and be good to each other every fucking day. We're not here to suffer. So don't please don't believe that shit when people tell you we're here to suffer. That's not true, man. That is not true. Hurt people, hurt people. And all we have to do is stop being shitty and the suffering will fucking end. And I promise you that's the truth. Beautiful. Uh, Rainy, you got your hands up and then we'll go to G-Bear. Actually, we haven't heard much from G-Bear. Rainy, are you okay if we jump to G-Bear right now? G-Bear. Yeah, I got something. I'm going to say something quick and my man's got his take too since this is about the community. This is my community member right here so he got a little quick but what I was going to say is on what he said as far as that we are, people believe that we are born to suffer. I do not feel that is necessarily the case but I do feel like there are groups of people and if I'm going to be honest like, and I'm going to say like as far as biblically, go ahead, use mine. Biblically, there's people that I feel like is brought here not saying necessarily to be like suffer but i feel like there are circumstances where like you know as far as like you know they say the sins of the father trickle down to the child you know what i'm saying i feel like suffering is it, it is in certain certain cir circumstances you are just made up to you 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 you, you don't have the op you don't have the tools you don't have the opportunity and i'm not talking about the black community in this aspect i'm talking about in general you got people that's like in afghanistan other places that they, they, they i'm not saying they was born to suffer but through they like through the situation they was in, they was going to suffer regardless. Like, there was no way for them not to suffer. And then, yeah. who was about to say that? Um, man, I work, where I work at, there's this dude. And the day he came up there, and where I'm at right now, it's snowing. Like, I don't know if we all in the same place. But where I'm at right now, it's snowing. And bro only got one coat. He come up to my job every day. And it's like, one at once upon a time, I feel like people bring their own suffering to themselves. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. you feel me? In some cases, most cases, I feel like people bring suffering to themselves. Cause my mama tell me that that man used to go to school like with him, like be put together and all of that. My mama told me that when they was in school, he used to be like that. He used to be a little cute, all all of that. Like, but now he's in the cold, in the snow, like with nothing. Like, and then I feel bad because like sometimes it cannot be like I feel like people like give know, up. You say they kind of give up. Yeah, they give up on themselves. It, it, it brings suffering. Mm -hmm. you feel me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yo G Bear. I like your friend, man. That's a bright young man. Yeah. That's a bright that's young man. Hang What's your name? You What's keep right? you keep good company, brother. Introduce him uh, so we can say hello. Let him introduce himself. Hey, my name is Treshawn, by the way, and I'm 19. Uh, Treshawn, hey, I'm Johnny, man. It's nice to meet you, little brother. It's nice yeah, to meet you for yeah. real. You know this. This reminds me of one of the things that fills me with hope right now in this world. The younger generations that are coming up right now are blowing my mind. We didn't talk about this shit when we were 19 years old. Are you kidding me? Like the fact that we got the newest generation loading up with this knowledge in their heads is that's just a beautiful ass thing. It's a beautiful ass thing. Most of the time, they're they're not. I'm I'm keeping it real with you. Most of most of the people out here, most of these young kids are not. Like it's a select few like that really know what they're talking about, and that's because they've been through shit. Like most people like around my age go through. Mama issues, brother issues, sister issues, financial issues. Like, it's so many issues for young people. And I feel like people are sleeping on young people. And, I mean, and I feel like 
that if somebody were to help me, well, not help me, like I'm doing fine, you feel me? But if I had help on the way, I could be a better person. Right. But like, but young right. people, young, right. young people don't like if they had people like to tell them like this, that, and the third. Like my brother, for instance, like I'm like he's not doing good in school, like, and I'm trying to tell him like once that once you fall back, but it's hard to catch up. Like, uh, and I know, for yeah. Yeah, we're talking not Bible says, oh, boy, don't let anybody right despise right you because of your youth. Mm. Yes, that exactly. That's what I was exactly trying to say. Just because you're young doesn't mean you don't have wisdom to share. He ain't he, he not to be underestimated. My man's 19, got his own place, got his brother in his place with him. You know what I'm saying? So it's not even like they on boy, they on man time at this point. You know what I'm saying? So, like, right. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, I, I knew uh, I knew I loved his energy as soon as I heard him start talking. Hell yeah, little brother. Hell thanks yeah. Thanks for being here with us, man. Okay, so Rainy, you had your hand up, and then I want to go on to the next uh consideration I wanted to put forth for this conversation. So hit it up, Rainy. Y'all keep blowing the conversation out the water consistently, and it's <laughs> breaking my brain, folks. Like I'm I'm retracting like 50 years of knowledge every time. Yeah. Okay, so no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not complaining. It's it's amazing. I love. I love doing it. It's just. It nice. looks. I look so stupid doing it. No, I disagree. I disagree. Uh, did you have something you wanted to say, or should we move on to the next consideration? Uh, I wanted to. Well, I guess. I guess I'm considering an amalgamation of everything because um, mm -hmm. what I wanted to say beforehand was um. Well, what I wanted to say now. Somehow, somehow the conversation in my head comes right back around to silence mm -hmm. and how suffering, suffering that is unnoticed, that goes by unnoticed is a lot more painful. Oh, right, oh, right. Because sometimes this you is, cause suffering. This is beautiful. <laughs> not happening. This, this is the perfect segue. This is the, like, I, I love this synchronicity, man. Just, ugh. Rainy. It's just, it's just, I will ask it's just you, I will ask you the question that I was going to ask everybody. You literally segued perfectly into this, okay? <laughs> how is community health measured? How, or excuse me, how is community mm -hmm. mental health measured in your perspective? <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> Let me put out a disclaimer. Another one that I'm a sociologist mm -hmm. and I understand it's a flawed science because it's a social science. And it's a flawed science because there is no accurate way to measure a human experience. Okay. You know? You, okay. The only thing you can go off is their word. That you, mm -hmm. you can only trust them as much as they trust themselves. So if, if you're looking at it at the certain angle that it's just you suffering through all of this, and all these people are just doing things and they say mean things and they make you, you know, you beget your own suffering. You, you hang out with the wrong friends, you know, whatever. You could say that or you could say that there are a bunch of you in a similar situation and there are other people in slightly different but similar situations. And it's just, it, it's, ugh, I'm turning into fucking Peterson. I'm sorry. That's all good. It's a game. It's it's a game of, it's not a game of oh who's the most miserable. It's a game of who requires the most aid. Mm -hmm. Like where do we start? That's what the question is. Not that's a, not that's what thing. should we be doing it for? We should be doing it for everybody. That's you know it's everyone should have the same footing. Mm -hmm. But some people are you know some people are on the starting track. They're ne they're knelt down on the on the starting brick and they're ready to go in life and they're like tell me what to do drop the hat what protest what movement and they're ready to fucking jump into it at the guts okay um, but there's people who who actually support that that are like literally fucking meters behind the starting block mm. because they were put there because they said your opinions are your opinions because we've already told you what you are mm -hmm. we know you're suffering so therefore it's invalid you know when you suffer in silence and it becomes normalized mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you can't say anything anything about it and then it becomes this shared miserable experience where we all think life is suffering absolutely it's right. like the story of the guy that was in hades and he had to push the boulder up to the top of the hill and like, you know that yeah you already know that story okay 
but but yeah so i i know a I know a version of that story where it's what's it's a mm, existent- oh. <laughs> you know you know where where yeah, if, if you know the bounds of your limits if you know i got oh. you know and you can say your galaxy is limitless i argue you're just the fucking potato that managed to walk that's a different yeah. opinion to have but that's you know that's like a that's like a I have a problem with um, humanity and biologics and chemistry. Oh, you know, that's a whole oh, different. God. I I'm on a fucking different existence, Shane. You just like like I'm saying, people assume things because mm-hmm. you know they're just like, oh yeah, he just says random smart things occasionally. They don't they don't assume that I've actually done the homework and I've suffered through the mental trauma to just mm-hmm. try to make sense of it. Uh, and and other people and other people will just sit there. And assume that they're not causing trauma because okay. they are per- in their Randy, own opinion. Randy, Wait, right? one question. You they're, said a lot can, of things. Can, oh, they can perceive real quick, that real they real are what? Perfect? I'll take them all. Shane take them all. G-Bear went first, though. Oh. G-Bear went first, though. Let, let, me, let me say something real Wait, quick. Wait, Omar, Omar. Say it quick if you can say it quick. I'll let say me, it real quick. I gotta go. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, you gotta bounce, Shane? Oh, I, all right. Yeah, legit. Okay, one th- just one thing. I, I have to... If I do, can you bring me into these on a more narrow topic next time? Sure. Uh, narrow. Yeah, you know what? Get, no, no, get no, in the Discord no, no. and start uh, guiding that narrowness where you want to bring up your own. Because in the Discord, you, in, the, in, the disc- in the Discord, it gets codified. When we're here in the present, it's easy to get distracted. In the Discord, I, you're setting it in stone, and we can return to it again and again. So start writing out your code in the Discord. You feel me? That's some vagina. Did stuff. I, do I have the permissions to do that? Yes, you do. To what? To oh, be able to okay, great. I forgot like about that. I forgot about what? that. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I have. I have. Okay, yeah. I, I have help. You're a member of this community. That's I know. Yes. I really appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. that, guys. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't yeah. <laughs> only okay. debate right. what's <laughs> comfortable yeah. for you. That's a real debater status. So real quick, yeah, real okay. quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. So G-Bear, one G-Bear second, first? we're going to get to you. Mafia, you're coming in kind of late. Just to clarify one thing, this is not a debate. Okay, we're not debating here. Oh boy, my- this is a, this is a, this is a, this is a communal effort to mine wisdom and healing, right? Yes. All right. So uh, step forth, brother. Speak your truth. Facts. So now nah, what Randy was saying. I, I I get that. I, I I resonate on what he not the all right. So what he was saying about the community health part when he was when he was on the topic, he, I, he, I, I I was kind of blanking a little bit. That's my fault because that's just because shit with the world. But what he was saying on the like he's saying he did his homework, he went through it, and when people hear him him speaking, they may get you know on another level before they even peep what he really trying to say. And I get where people can be misunderstood. You know what I'm saying? People can be misunderstood, and I and I and I could I could I could resonate with that. You know what I'm saying? I was just actually today talking a legit about that. I was like, people can misinterpret on how he coming off when he's saying things. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. I, I, I I get that part. You know what I'm saying? And as far as you know, how those like, and, and like implicit vibes can hurt you, whether you choose listen. to be hurt. Or not. Sorry, yeah. Community mental health starts and begins with reality. And it ends right. So a lot of a lot a lot of a lot of human beings they love and they enjoy to lie to themselves, right? Mm. When you look yourself in the mirror, you lie to yourself. Mm. When you talk to your mother, your father, you lie to yourself. When you talk to someone that might hire you for a job, you lie to yourself. When you go out to the club and you order a Moscow mule and you look to the girl to the right and you guys start talking, you lie to yourself. Humanity is to lie to ourselves, unfortunately, in our current society. So to uh, try and act uh, like you're a real ass dude is pussy. Can I count shit. it? Hold on. Let, let, him, let, him, let him finish. Because he's going full can circle. Please yeah. go to full circle. Please. I, do, I don't want to do this to you, Mo, uh, Omar. I really don't want to do this no, to me. No, I want it to be done to me. Okay. Nah, let him finish. He was going full circle. I promise no, you. No, no, I was done. I was done. No, no, no. I, I no but you said, but you were saying that reality is a lie. And I get what you're saying. We lie to ourselves, but why is it Every that day. Think, What is that gaining? You know what I'm saying? So here's yeah, a, yeah, so yeah. the question. The question, if, if this can help rope this in, the question was, how is community health, health measured? In your perspective, and, and I, I, would, uh, I, I would, I would, I would dovetail, I would dovetail on that. Okay, 
So if measured, what Rainey pointed out is that measuring a human's experience is, is let's just say, very difficult, <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, I don't want to say impossible because we're, we're all about trying to break through the bounds of possibility, right? But instead of how is community mental, he mental health measured, how is community mental health sensed, right? Mm. Sensed? It's, sensed? Right. Yeah. It depends on the area, right? So if you're in the projects, church, uh, or church, oh, church, church, hey, yo, um, listen, I, I, I gotta, like, I gotta get out of this loop, this vibe loop that I'm in. I keep coming back to this chat, but I will say, y'all, pick a religion or something and stick with it, yeah, and then one, even huh? everything else. Oh, time. I'm one, just huh? saying, like words, words of the wise, you know, just words do of your, the wise, words you're of the wise, Mike Tyson, bro, you ain't wise, sorry, oh, legit. Oh. Oh. Are we no, getting we right. I'm not a competitive spirit. Okay, you guys, lose. let's. I'm gonna throw <laughs> everybody out real quick. I'm gonna just start muting everybody if y'all don't start. <laughs> yes, out, okay? everybody, everybody, <laughs> chill out, please. Everybody, 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 everybody. Okay, no, we won't do yeah, it. Everybody. everybody going off topic. I ain't gonna lie, I was guilty. Of it's okay. I had hold on, like G Bear, G Bear, chill out, please. Everybody, yeah, hold, on. Gotcha. hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, just, just to be clear, real quick, where this podcast started was about healing. Okay, it's about healing. So mm. if it's not going towards healing, we're not going in a direction that's practical. You can't have a podcast with more than three people well, at the same time. Perhaps. Oh, okay. that's incorrect. That's, that's false. false. That's false. I, I taught you that's that in the false. beginning of our first encounter. You can't have a podcast. Okay. With that's three false. Three that's that's, that's you. That that that, that 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 that's you we're being. Just, we're uh, talking over uh, each other right now. Everybody's talking at the same time. You're That's talking a, as if you're our uh, like. You start a uh, state. You're you're on a community server, right? Community server, legit. What do you mean? Uh, wow, wow. You can start something. Why are you, you can talking, talking like you're a state, conqueror? Which is a radio and broadcast what you say on Discord. It's called a stage. Right, right. You take the stage and you and then people request to speak. They request to speak and you, in order of request, allow them to speak. Mm -hmm. And you will have a timer of like, I don't know, five minutes or ten, depending on how popular you are. I would set it to 15 minutes at first so you can have nice long conversations. And then you say, hey, by the way, let's wrap this conversation up. There's five minutes left. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then you end it. You strictly end it on time. And then you put them back in the audience. Or actually, they leave themselves, which is polite. They'll leave themselves and the third person who's there if there is a third person, uh, the next person you allow them to come in. Sometimes you just have to go with the vibe to figure out if you need three people or two people, but you can also plan this out where you have a special guest. Like I have Maria Gobetti, who's this really, you can, I'll, I'll let you have her, you know, she's, a, she would be a perfect guest for, she's so, she is, I'm not going to go, I'll, I'll talk about it later, but I got to go. Uh, love you. Okay. Right, love you too, Shane. Thank you. Uh, uh, mafia, Mafia, finish. Mafia. I'm not going to lie. Uh, first of all, have you been drinking, Mafia? Yes, sir. Okay, I have. so I'm not going to lie. You've kind of come in here. I love you dearly. And you've kind of fucked up the whole vibe. So I'm going to ask you. I apologize. Uh, it's okay. I'm going to ask you to pull it back a little bit and really read the room around what we're trying to do here. Word. Um, and if you can't, I'm going I'm to gently excuse you from the podcast, okay? Of course, of course, cool. man. So, I, I, so, I'm not here. So, so we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep moving forward, okay? So the top the the question put forth was, how can, and how is from each of your perspective, community mental health measured and or sensed? Okay. Oh, I, I have a. I can. I can do this now. Okay, go ahead, please. And then we'll go to you, Tom. Mafia actually again. ironically brought the perfect crowbar. Awesome. Thank you. Beautiful. That's Beautiful. all I'm trying to do. You know what it is? It's it, oh oh G Bear, you wanna go first? You can oh, go first. I can go into it. Go no, 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 I insist, I insist. I defer, I defer. Alright, now my man actually has something to say, so he can answer that nicely. So go ahead, um, buddy. Can you ask the question one more time, please? Yeah, so how is community mental health measured and or sensed in your perspective? Mm. Okay, so first off, like, it's all dealing with the government. We don't, it's like, with me, me being 19, like, well, me being 18, well, I'm finna be 19, but well, I'm not 19, but I'm 18 with my, like, own place, doing this stuff, like, like, it's hard, like, 
it, the government just making it hard every day. And it's just like put stress on me. I got to deal with this stuff. Like it's making my head hurt. Well, not net really make, not literally making my head hurt, but like me thinking about it 24 seven, my focus, like I'm still in school too with bills. And then I got two dogs on top of that. Uh, so how do you think the government measures that? Like, how do you think they like are, how can they figure out that you're going through these problems? Like, I'm not saying like be like my savior, like pay bills for me. I'm not saying do all that, but like I'm just saying make it easier for me. Like people, some people cut it. They they like try to do it on their like way too fast. No. But some try to do it on their own way too fast. Study. And either it could be a mess up or it could be good luck. You feel me? So mm. it, it's like it's like so like help me yeah help me be successful. Like. For sure. like <laughs> Everybody, I'm sorry, but I need to. I couldn't figure out how to work the chat, but I have somebody here, so I need to go. All right, thanks for joining um, us. Peter. Yeah, thanks for being here, brother. Thank it's you so good, much. To you. Oh, good to meet you. Peter. I love you, Peter. Love you all. Love you all back. It's okay, Peter. Mm-hmm. All right, Pete. Hey, come back, man, later on, you know, so we can, Listen. you know, I would like to talk with you more. That's G Bear. Listen. All right, we'll do that, okay? Talk soon. Bet. When it- when it comes to when it comes to society, everything that you base your life upon is every artist or famous actor that you uh, base yourself upon, right? So society and societal uh, entertainment is really who you are, right? Mm-hmm. So you base yourself off of your favorite action figure, off of your favorite movie star. And you try to make yourself like that dude, your favorite musician, mm. right? Like that—that's it. A lot of I know a lot of people that try to base themselves off G. Keith. So, um, so basically, uh, what does this have to do with the how we pr- how we measure or sense uh, community mental health? Community mental health is based on that personal community. So there's a lot of communities where they feel that murdering someone over a dispute Mm -hmm. is a healthy form of that community, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, um, so for example, uh, there's certain communities where if someone were to insult you and you didn't murder them, you're a pussy and Mm -hmm. you're not an advocate of that community. I want to say that murder, nigga. For me, yeah. Well, not nowadays. It is drama yeah, like that. It, it it's all about drama. Yeah. You mean? Yeah. I get what you're saying, legit. So, like, it, I feel like it's measured, and you saying like, how do, and who is this person trying to measure? Like, who's trying to figure out this? Are you saying people as like other people that are not in that community? How do they measure? I mean, and how do they like, figure out? Like, you're. Uh, I'm sorry, I already forgot your friend's name. Trey. Trey. Yeah, Trey. Trey. Okay, so you said you you pointed out the government, right? Like the government measuring and sensing community. But well, what if we just didn't put it on that level? Like how? Like let's just say you came into a community, you doing your thing, and you roll up into a community. It, are you going to be able to sense any aspect of that community's mental health at all by existing? Probably. Probably not. It'd be, it'd be very difficult well, quick, if, you're not, if you're not if you're not a part of the community it's kind of difficult to pick up on the vibe in the community you know so you have to be I a part of you, it johnny oh, chain saws you got the wifey in the back and she's a loyal one i can sniff it off her but here's what it is right so is the human mentality meant to be stable uh i'm not sure but taxis you had your hand up when when we're talking about about community mental health, um, it, I think it's important to talk about some distinctions here. Can mm-hmm. it can it be measured? Yes, mm-hmm. I believe so. Can it be quantified? That's a totally different thing. Mm-hmm. A lot of people conflate the two. Uh, for instance, you can look at a bathtub and you can quantify in gallons mm-hmm. if you have that information. You don't necessarily need that information to tell if the bathtub's full or half full or close to empty. You can intuit that. Mm -hmm. That comes with experience. I think the same thing happens with your awareness and mental health. Going into a community, 
the, the more experience and context you have with the community, the better you'll be able to, to tell it. Absolutely. I agree with you. On Listen, that. my man Legit Go is going to be streaming in, in a few hours uh, right, the right. movie Into the Wild. Yeah. And that is a genuine representation of genuine humanity. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be I feel like... Go ahead. Go ahead, G-Bear. What were you saying? <laughs> Yes. So what? So y'all said me? Oh, my, my. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. G-Bear, gang, gang, gang. Yo, my oh. boy, oh my man, what's good? But hey, but like though, so on some real now, nah, I feel like what he was saying was like, yeah, you can't. He, what, uh, I'm sorry. Nice. Your name, taxes. Okay, yeah, yeah. My memory, yeah. So taxes. You good? You good? What's it called? Uh, what you said was a fact. It's easy to be able to tell, and I'm I'm a broaden on my my input, but. What you say, it was e it's, it's easy to be able to tell that, okay, there is a problem here. But it, like you said, it's hard to quantify it. It's hard to actually break it down and figure out how to fix the problem because it's like you actually, like, it's more deeper. You got to know the history of the problem. You understand where the problem started and stemmed from. And then from that, from that knowledge, that's the only way you can step forward. You got to understand, like, like how to, how to, like, further tackle it. Because there's a lot of things that can be done. You could throw out money. You could do this. But like if the man, if the mindset and the mentality is still where it is, all oh, you really don't like, cause for real, like Omar was saying, people really out here they real live will kill a nigga for this. Like you and you, especially if you around your man, like you not about to play with me. Like that's that's just how it, the mentality is. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Somebody bust the camera out, get the trying clown. That's when you gonna probably go hard or like what? You not about to? You know what I'm saying? So like, right, right. That's, that's just how the mentality. So you put in money if you just be like, ah, right, you know, like. Like with the with the with the with, with the stimulus check. Now the stimulus check did two th and, and, the, and the government thing with the COVID. I'm gonna just get that for example. Let's say there's no COVID on the table and it's just money coming out like that just for the just off the strength. It made and break a lot of people in this in the community. It did like like my man's was saying. Yeah. He said if I could just get a little help, that real I put like me put able to put one of my daughter was being born. I, I didn't get the money, but my girl did. You know what I'm saying? I put a lot of the early things that it can make or break. Now the other niggas, and I ain't gonna say who, but I got you know family members, family members. I, I got brothers. You and me that real life when they got that shit. That shit was that shit was used for trapping. That shit up now. Now keep in mind they, they up and they not back down. They still ain't down from that. That did help. Now you know what I'm saying? But the point hey. of the, like, what 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 Hold is on, you Mark, not yeah. cute? You're not caring nothing with that, with right. money. Uh, well, before I move on, I want to read some chat. RN K Katie Ratch says, Philadelphia is sick. Evidence being that Philadelphians are shooting and killing each other. It's been getting sicker. Yeah. And then she says, and this is a really good point right here. I think this is a really yep. good point. A measurable outcome would be reduced violence toward each other. Mm. Right. Says who? And that, and that can be a key indicator of mental Says health. Says who? It's not mental health oh. directly. Says who? Uh, she's absolutely right. Yeah, that specifically, is that absolutely... was R. N. Katie Ratch that said that. Uh, Mafia. So, yes, yeah. R. N. Katie Ratch. Yeah, here's the thing, right? right? Hold on, so hold on, hold on, hold on. The... Mafia. Uh, you came in late. We're putting our hands up. So if you have something to say, because we got to stop cutting each other off. When if you have something to say, put your hand up. I'm gonna keep track of who's got their hand up. Johnny's had his hand up for a minute, so I'm gonna call on him right now. Go ahead, Johnny. Thank you. Two things real quick. Uh, our and Katie Ratch is right there cooking dinner. And uh, G-Bear, uh, G -Bear, uh, check your homies. Uh, I'm sorry, check your DMs, homie. I got something for you. All right. That's okay. all. I'm so, good. Uh, Thank you. Uh, ma uh, taxes or Mafia, go ahead. You have your hand up. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, um, in, in regards to happiness and, and especially making your family happy, right? Um, that's Gabba Go. Because what you got to understand is your family, your parents grew up in a different time period with different music interests. Mm. So when they hear your music interests or any interests that you have, they're not going to identify with them. And this was made by the masters that be, right, in order to create a rift between your parents and you, right? Um, so it's up to you to relate to your parents, right? So mm. I will always love... Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, based on how I was raised through my hood, not even from my own parents, but from my friends' parents. But um, if you're bumping Justin Bieber's new album and your parents are bumping Dark Side of the Moon, it's going to create a rift. 
between the two of you. So is it? Right? Am I am I summing up correctly when I say that one of the practical the practical processes that you're talking about is the younger generation having compassion and empathy for the older generations? Uh, having knowledge for the older generation because the older generations had uh, more talent and more purity within their art while the current generation has more just whatever's popping for their art right mm -hmm. so the current generation the young bucks the 20 year olds the 21 year olds they are fake human beings mm -hmm. they're not genuine human beings i'm not and i'm not if, i'm not sure that's easily like how do you measure fake or not uh someone that solely dedicates everything they enjoy and their personality to mm -hmm. what's popular at the moment got it well this is actually a really good segue this is a, this segues perfectly into the next question i wanted to put forth and this is the last one after this i, I want to start wrapping it up because because uh in, unless we got like more we want to talk about but uh so here's what i want to put forth for y'all to consider what is supportive to community mental health versus what is not what is supportive to community mental health versus like what is and what isn't supportive in your perspective to uh, here, community here's mental, community mental health. Go ahead, Omar, please. Can I go first? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, what's supportive to community mental health is to accept all of the parts of community mental health that destroy people. And um, um, the community, right, for the most part, is destroyed. So what you need to do is to accept uh, the the evil of the community, mm. right? But more importantly, respect the evil of yourself mm. and find a way to let that evil eat you up inside, right? And share it to a few people. Like, there's a few people that are interested in your evil, mm. in your personal evil. Like, Legit. Legit is interested in your evil. And Legit will... It is true. So if you tell your evil to Legit, he will genuinely try to help you in your existence. But your psychologist or psychiatrist might just try to make some dollar out of it. Right? So there's very Omar. few... Uh, Question for you, man. Who said that? Where did that come from? Oh, Texas. Texas. Go for it. Texas. When, when you say accept and... Um, what was the other word? You said learn to accept the evil and learn and sh to... And share. I, I, am share I getting that correctly? Your own you individual share, evil. Correctly? share it with others? Yeah. Yes, sir. Would, would, would you say maybe that awareness of it is, is maybe a more accurate word than acceptance? Is that kind of what you're trying to get across? I'm trying to... No, 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 no. It's acceptance. It's acceptance. Awareness is cool, right? You can be aware of a disease, but it's the difference between being aware of a disease and acceptance. Of okay. Right? Okay. Now, when you okay, let me let me ask you this as a follow up. When you say accepting, does that mean you're okay with it, or are you just no. saying accepting the hey, fact uh, that hey, it Randy, exists? Can you do me a favor and real. mute yourself really quick if you're going to be making a bunch of noise in the background? Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank I, you. Um, Appreciate that. Uh, Go ahead, Taxes. Um, I just got hacked, so uh -oh. uh, I'm having fun. Oh, we're not trying to have you hacked. Good luck, no, man. but it's it's uh it's acceptance, right? So like um, right, right. if you if you if you started uh, doing an upside-down push-up right now and started saying something in Vietnamese, if I were to say that that's not cool, that's not cool. But if I, if I were to say, oh, that is cool, that is you being you, that, that's genuine, that's a human, that's a human reaction. I think, that's I, I, I think framing what you're talking around talking about around evil is where people are going to have a problem with this because i feel like what you're saying is actually really accurate to what taxis and other people were talking at the very beginning of this conversation right which was like acknowledging the reality of your pain and trauma for what it is and not bottling yeah, that up yeah, that's inside, a great way to say it. right like for instance for instance yeah, like acknowledging your brokenness like, like for instance if i'm having thoughts where i want to hurt myself and others it, it's going to be less helpful to keep that bottled up and not do anything about it than to talk to anybody and go, yo, this is what's going on inside of me. And from what you're saying, what you're saying is that if I'm and correct me, if I'm, if I'm, uh, if I, if I'm wrong, 
But what you're saying is that it's healthy to, to when someone comes at you like that, to be like, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I accept that that's what you're saying. I make no judgment and I'm not going to like do anything to you. I'm not going to, no. you know, you like, it's just about being honest about the reality of that experience first and foremost. Cause if you, you can't go right. from where you're not. Right. Right. right, right. Like, and, a, and that, like that a, was my question. Got it. a true, a true, genuine human, right? If you were to come to me and you were to insult me, however that insult could possibly help me grow as a human, I would be a fake human um, if I found that common as an insult. You know understand what I'm saying? I think so. You're talking, so, you're talking about like um, cultural interpretations as well, right? Any interpretations, right? So if you said, "Hey, Omar, your hair's not looking good right now," I'll go like this, and I'll and I'll be like, "Is this better?" And then some will say, "Yeah," and then I'll be like, "Oh my gosh, I kind of look like I'm a skater," and then I'll say, "Okay, I'll accept that." That's just a, a, a minuscule example of what I'm talking about. But what I'm talking about is this: at the end of the day. There's not a single fucking human being that truly cares about your problems because every human being has their own problems. Now, if you're lucky, you'll find someone like Legit, who is someone that has many problems. That's true. But, but what makes him happy is, is solving other people's problems. Mm, I feel right. like Johnny has something to say about this that's going to dovetail and expand yeah, the conversation. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny's a good kid. He's a handsome man as well. Johnny, mm. look at that woman you got cooking you, you cooking you dinner again. Spit it. I don't remember. You don't remember what you were going to say? Oh, no, okay, it, so took, the, it, took, the, it took too long. There was no silence. Okay. So the question was... Uh, let me get bring it up again. The question was... Uh, what is supportive to mental or to community mental health versus what is not supportive to community mental health in your perspective? And actually think about that because I want to read something in chat. Uh, uh, RN Katie says uh, 20 year olds are not fully developed brains. It's our job to shape them. Rob says, oh. hello. Rob says, hello. What's up, Rob? The mechanic says, Community mental health is currently declining because while we are more connected with people throughout the world because of the digital age we're in, the result being we are falling away from in real life social interaction, which is what we as humans need. We are isolating away from our immediate community, therefore have no in real life support, right? So to bring it back to, to the panel, Johnny, the, 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 the question of the, that I put forth was... Yeah, the question. Okay, so... Go ahead. Go ahead. What is supportive to community mental health in your perspective and what is not? <clears throat> so compassion is helpful. Judgment is hurtful. Mm. And as far as Omar saying that people don't give a shit about you and your problems, like I literally do. I'm a being of light and love. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm at peace with my traumas. And I teach other people how to be at peace with theirs. And for me to be successful in my mission, I genuinely have to care. Like there, when I say, when I say I love somebody, there's conviction. Yeah. Right. I, like G, G. I love you, brother. I love you, brother. I love you too. I love you. I love you. And I agree. Right. I have to say, I have to disagree. And with I, you I, well, Omar. and I can, I can say that, brother. If you were here, I would, I would hug you, and you would feel my heart beating in yours, and you would know that I love you, man. I want you to be well. I do. And so when you say that that there's nobody gives a shit about other people's problems, I'm a being of love, man. There's people like me all over the place. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sorry that you haven't met us, but we exist, and we do give a shit. We're the ones who heal the world. We are the healers of the fucking trauma that you that you suffer, man. I mean, we're out here. We're, we all have the healer inside of us. Like, I, I just need to tell you, like, on a biological level, I don't have a choice in this. <clears throat> if you're in pain, I'm in pain. That's just how it works. If I right. sense that you're suffering, mm. my body is just gonna, my limbic system is gonna do what it's evolved for billions of years to do, which is to interpret the experience of others and how it relates to me on a subconscious level, you know? And so, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, I'm and listen, here. listen, the movie that he is going to play tonight, Into the Wild. So let me be real with that movie, Into the Wild tonight, seven p.m. Um, Pacific. that movie changed my life. Yeah, we go watch that. Uh, Into the Wild, bro, it changed my life as a human being. Yeah, we go watch that. Uh, Rainy, you had your hand up. 
Yeah, yeah. The question oh, was, what is what is supportive of community mental health versus what is not, in your perspective? What is important to community health? No, what is supportive to community mental health versus what is not supportive to community mental health, in your perspective? Oh, well, um, your labels, your connotations. Wait, is that helpful or not helpful? You got to clarify for me so I can understand. No, I'm, I'm saying that's what that that's that's the pinching point. That's your that's the fulcrum. That's the middle ground that pivots between it being helpful and not. If your connotation is overtly, like if your delivery is trying to correct somebody uh, into a proper way of life, mm -hmm. who are you to say uh, my life isn't proper? Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, this is what we were talking about on uh, Melanated's podcast last night, which is uh, we were talking about self love, and uh, people were talking about mm -hmm. people were talking about how oh, if I see someone hurting themselves, I need to tell them save your complex. right, right, save your complex. Like oh, I'm supposed to tell them that they're supposed to be a different person. But you know what I would say to that is like what you're doing is you're projecting at that point. You're saying. I need you to be different for my sake, right? Oh. As opposed to empathetically feeling their pain right. and trying to understand what's causing it with them, right. you know, sharing their load. Right. Exactly. Like exactly. Sharing uh. the load. That's sharing. And, and when, it, when you say load, I would, I would put forth for consideration to think about that in like electrical engineering terms load being oh, like an electrical load you're Ooh. literally taking on the charge that someone's carrying within their body in your so body it's it's kind of like a thought requires a certain amount of energy and it yes. needs certain amount right of and this is this to, is this is why i think and this is Man. why any step in anybody and correct me or add to this but this is why when the conversation of you have to love yourself to love others becomes like like <laughs> practical on a scientific level if you're not ready to carry a certain charge and you try to you're just going to end up hurting yourself and the person who you told you could carry it but you can't right mm -hmm. so loving nah, yourself, loving yourself is calibrating yourself to carry charge and you're probably already carrying that within you so now if you find someone that you can resonate with that's carrying a similar charge you're already ready the capacitance you become a capacitor right like in electrical engineering terms you hold a charge and the bigger your gauge is, like if you're a 12 gauge wire, you're not gonna be able to hold past a certain amount of voltage. You gotta up your gauge, right? That's So self-love isn't just about like positive thoughts. It's about literally carrying charge. I just wanna put that forth for consideration. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. yeah, I love that. I love that. It's beautiful, man. Thank you. Anyway, Hell yeah. Anybody else wanna add yeah. to that? Hey, yeah, let me let me add to that. Taxes, um, lay it on us. Oh. Uh, uh, no, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Yeah, my bad, because I didn't want to mess up they back and forth, because it was actually like the way they was flowing, it was lit. And I wanted to speak on what what, uh, what Rainy said, because I agree, but also in a way I kind of like disagree with, with how what what, 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 what what I really don't disagree at all, because I agree with how he said that um like it's about how you come across to the person, you know what I'm saying? But I do feel like like I feel like. It's not the person's fault at all, but I feel like it, just for me as an example, like I feel like as growing up, I ain't get too much like insight, like not too many, not too many. I was always begging for knowledge, like I wasn't asking for it, but whenever it came along, I wanted to hear it. So anybody's input, and of course, I always you know get my little weight in on it. But at the end of the day, I take everything as what people say to me as one hundred percent fact. And 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 though that do get get you a little gullible in life, but as as on some except for like you know on some street, you know, I ain't even gonna get on that. But you know what I'm saying? As far as when yes. people tell it, I yes. take it as fact. That street. like it's like it's it's you innocent till proven guilty. But not even just because of that. It's just off the strength of like you hearing somebody tell you something. This is the information that they are trying to portray across to me, regardless if it is fact or not. This is what the story and this is what is coming off. So anything you bring in towards me, this is what you have built for me. So regardless of anything the image you gave me, like regardless of what you 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 need to hear that. You know what I'm saying? So like that's why like I feel like I get it, but I don't agree with no with a savior complex because I feel like mm -hmm. it's like. 
somebody it's, I feel like it depends on the person taking the information and though again that person mm-hmm. like you that that person that's the savior they feel like they want to help that person and and it's like that person's not receiving the information well mm-hmm. but but I feel like it is on the person receiving the information it, more than it is the person trying to give the information because when it comes to like relationship wise I can speak to my girl as kind as I'm trying to portray to her to like hey come across or do this talk like this. please can you you know what I'm saying but she can snap back any way she wants to so that's why I feel like it's real live it depends on the person that is receiving the information more than anything. right because you got to realize that person has to realize and, and I get what y'all saying and that's what, what Kate was saying a person will not be helped unless they want exactly. to be helped because exactly. they can't lead a horse to the water but right. it will not that shit unless it want to yeah. right so and hold here's on, hold, on, mafia, hold on hold on taxes had his hand up and then johnny had his hand up then we'll go to you mafia so taxes hit it up yeah man um part of what we're talking about and part of what you what you're talking about g bear is is the ability to maybe communicate in an effective way you got to make sure that you are on the same level and that what you're saying is what the other person is understanding Mm. That, that's part of learning to communicate well is making sure you're on the same page if i say one thing and you think i'm saying something else that's a failure on my part mm-hmm. and that's why it's important to communicate clearly like that mm. it's also it's also important on the other side of that to ask questions about that like i was asking omar earlier to try and clarify what he was what i was on making sure i understood what he was saying you understood you know i i had to be responsible for my understanding and so i wanted to ask those questions now as to the the ability to help other people, uh, Lajee was saying, you, you know, you gotta you gotta care for yourself first, and it's it's not just it, it's not just that he's absolutely right. But it, sometimes to get that self care, you have to have somebody else tell you truth and speak truth mm-hmm. to you. There is absolute truth. Caring caring about yourself first is very selfish. It's, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. Actually, but, but it uh, can but be. Finish. It really can be. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right, Omar. It can be, but a lot of it has to do with the underlying spirit behind that, the heart mm-hmm. behind that. Mm-hmm. So, Johnny, you okay. had your hand that, up. Do you want to? Oh, I'm sorry, Tax. Yeah, sorry. thank. I thought you were done. Uh, oh, you No, no, Ta- Tax. You good, man? Uh, I, I was going to say, Johnny. sometimes. To understand that you have to borrow from somebody else's opinion of yourself, mm. uh, uh, of mm. you, to form your own opinion of yourself. Like for me to look right at the camera right now, all five of you dudes, you are important. You matter. You are enough. I love you. I love you too, brother. It's okay too. being you. God, I love your There's energy. There's nobody else you are supposed to be. Mm. Everybody Hell out yeah. there on Twitch right now. Hell yeah. The only you are reason- important. The only reason why you're saying that is because well, that is yeah. something that you believe in. And that the you only reason you're saying that is that. No, I, let's, let's keep I this, believe let's, it too. Let's keep this in order, though. Uh, no, I believe it too. Like, let's, let's I believe that in, in a core structure. Can we try to understand okay. what Omar comes trying to say, though? Because sometimes I don't want. Because I know my man's turned right now. G Bear, hold on. We're going to just turn this into a I'm to figure out what he's meaning. Huh? We're gonna give Omar a chance to speak in just a second. Oh, uh, so at the end of the day, oh Jesus, guys, come on! We, we, if we don't stick to agreements, we're gonna lack integrity. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna lack integrity if we don't speak. If we don't stick to our agreements, okay. So let's keep this in order so we can uh, okay. maximize what we're taking from this. Okay. So uh, uh, Johnny, you had your hand up. Now we're gonna go to Mafia. Now we're yep. gonna go to G Bear. Okay. So Johnny, lay it on us. All right, so I just want to say earlier, G Bear was talking about how um, uh, people have to have these realizations. So I, I'm a psychedelic healer. I'm a shaman. People come to me. They have we work through some shit, right? I don't do anything. I don't do anything special, right? I, I hold a space of love for them. They feel safe with me. I hold their hand. Sometimes they cry. They tell me all their fucking deep shit, right? That's part of the healing process, right? Uh, but you can't just tell people things. They they have to. It has to come from within, right? It's just like getting better from addiction or whatever. It is. You have to want to get better, right? You get, so they have to have these realizations. Where it has to come from within, they have to have these realizations for them to be well. That's true, man. As, as a Jeeber, you're so young to know these things, man. Like, when we were talking about this earlier in a discussion. Like, there's this group of young men, and uh, you're so bright. Like, you guys, you're so in touch with yourselves. And I wish, I wish I had your insights 20 years ago. Like, Fast. I'm an old head, right? I, I have, I have groups of young men that look to me, but I learned so much from you guys too, because you were so, you were so far ahead of where I was at, at that age. You know, and you, were, you were truly, man. Like, 
it, it's, it's I, homie, homie, it's a two-way street. I learned a lot from my youngins. I learned a lot from you guys. I, I, yeah. love, I love your day with Q-Bop, by the way. I thought you were great. Omar next. My bad. I ain't mean to yeah, talk, Omar, but I got yeah. Omar's next. Nah, I love uh, G Bear. So Omar's I next. I love G. Listen, I love G Bear more than life. Let me tell you, love I don't. I don't love life. I love G Bear. I wish there was more G Bears. No, I well, I love your life. So it's like it's gonna just go like that. So you know, nah, I love your life, bro. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Nah, I feel you. Because because G Bear you know, is a part you, of your life. G Bear is a he part, is a of, part of my life. life. So by logic, if you, love, me, you love your right. life because G Bear is in it, and there's probably other people that are part of that too, right? And this, but anyway, nah, oh, you. Friend, but, uh, you love me, love your life for me. Do it for nah, me. I do love G Bear. Love if I if I ever had a record label, I would <coughs> rather sign G Bear than Quavo. That's real shit. Real shit. Um, yo, John, Johnny Chainsaw, real quick. I just mm. want you to reiterate exactly what you just said, so I can. <laughs> But well, people have to, okay, so I'm a psychedelic healer, right? I don't do anything magical. There's nothing really to, that I do. That when people have their experiences, it all all of the wellness comes from within themselves, right? I say I, I I know shit. I don't really even say much. I see her. I hold their hands sometimes and they cry, and I'm just here, right? I just exist okay. with them as they're having their healing experience, right? And so so all the all the real healing comes from within, right? The psychedelics bring out mm -hmm. it's just holding a space of love because when you hold a space of love, magic happens, right? I don't do anything magical. I'm not magical, but when you hold a space of love, the magic will happen. Uh, so you do do something magical, but let me just say <laughs> something real quick, right? This is this is I'm gonna take this from Breaking Bad, right? So in Breaking Bad, Jesse Pinkman he goes to uh, AA meeting. The leader of the AA meeting he says he tells a story, and he says uh, I was blackout drunk one day. Uh, I needed more liquor. All my liquor ran out, so I ran in my truck. I hit reverse, I drove out real fast, I ran over my son and murdered my son. Oof. So here's what it is, right? So what I'm saying is, should you ever forgive yourself if you ran over your child in order to get more liquor? Do you, you forgive yourself or should you murder yourself? This is my question. Damn! You so should, you just, should just, keep just, drinking. Just hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to, I want to work with this energy. Okay, I want to work with this. Okay, how is this? How, this is relevant because the question was, what is, uh, what what is, supportive to community mental health versus what is not, and what Mafia has summoned, is is the energy of forgiveness versus trauma and extreme trauma extreme, extreme. trauma extreme i put you forth your... that those dynamics are incredibly relevant to the question at hand around what is supportive to community mental health versus what is not right yes is there anybody opposed to moving in this direction no can i oh i'm sorry yeah uh, no i don't want to uh, omar are you good yeah i'm good I'm okay good. I Lay it on us. My bad. I just wanted to say thank you for what he said, though, because I just wanted to say, like, I like I wish my, like, like he coming to me saying that he realized that I have some sort of intelligence. I wish, like, my father would have seen this. I wish, like, I mean, my, my brothers and them, they, they, they people, but I mean, like, my, because, you know, I got a lot of brothers. I got, I got a couple of sisters. I got a lot of sisters, too. Shit. But, uh, I mean, like, yeah, like, um, like, yeah, like, I, I wish my father, you know what I'm saying, on some real shit, like, it don't make no sense, but I'm sorry, that, that was way off topic, I should have said that for later. Hey, you're a better father than my father, let me tell you, I wish I had you as my father. <laughs> I love you, bruh. I love to... him too, my father left when I was five, he, he's a father of his kids right now, for no matter what age you go to, so, mm -hmm. who's, who's luckier, right? Speaking about, I mean, like, yeah. like fathers, and as and I want to again bring back because you brought up some powerful ass shit, Omar. You really did, like forgiveness. I, and and and, and <laughs> how do I say this? Okay, okay. I want to share something with y'all. All right, this might sound fucking weird, but bear with me. Okay, forgiveness is a murder. Mm. What you want to hear something even darker than that? It's I, I'm, a really not, dark I'm, not even, I'm not saying that's dark. For uh, let me finish. Forgiveness is a murder because to forgive something is to kill something. No, you are no. The, let me finish. Let me finish. No, no. If if mm -hmm. I if if you wronged me, 
and I carry something within me around that wrong, if I forgive you, I'm ending that in some capacity or otherwise there's no forgiveness. It's fake. Listen, if it's listen, real, you I, can't, I just want to say some. I just, I just want to say something real quick out of someone that I'm closely related, uh, not family blood related to, but family related to. Um, thirty thousand dollars, whatever you need. Some I have someone close to me that will take care of it. But other than that, um, in regards to all that gabagoo, I mean, in all honesty, right? Like my man Legit, exactly explain what you were saying just now. So I am someone. I'll put, I mean, this is a person. Like I said, this is weird and personal. This isn't something I'm like, hey, this is a what everybody is going on with everybody. This is very personal to me. One of the things I've had to cope with in my own mental health is learning how to cope with anger, rage, and aggression, and the desire to hurt myself and hurt others. Right, which is just simply the inverse of my desire to heal myself and heal others, right? It's all the same coin, just different sides, right? So one of the <laughs> hacks, one of the hacks I learned for myself was I was like, oh, I can take this energy and I can transmute it. I can take this aggression and instead of making weapons of anger that I want to use to cut people down, I can transmute that energy and build weapons of kindness to cut down things that are hurting people, to cut through illusions. Hey. What so what is what is your what is your what is your what is your inspiration to do all this? Look, why it's why survival. do you want to be a survival? That's survival is all survival. about positivity. Because there about is a... so much pain in this world that right? the, to to have war energy within me is to easily just get caught caught up into it. No matter how righteous mm -hmm. I think right. I am. Right? Right, but people but listen, listen, listen. People that are surviving the best in the best form don't care about those things. I can't speak for people. I'm speaking for myself. That's why I said this is personal. Yeah, for, that's fair. So for, that's for instance, fair. if I like if someone comes at me foul and I just want to be like this motherfucker, ooh, right? Just murder him. What I'm gonna do know, is I'm gonna switch it up and I'm gonna be like this shit. In this motherfucker is what I'm talking to, not this beautiful human being. What I'm talking to mm -hmm. is something that's built from trauma that's older than even them, and that's you the feel, thing I'm going after. Do you feel <laughs> all? You feel you feel all humans are beautiful. Intrinsically, all life is beautiful to me personally. Even the ugly, even the you're ugly. a good person. I don't know. If it's, not, it's, not, it's not about good or Let me it's speak not about up. good or bad. But G Bear, you had something to say. Yeah, when you were saying like as far as like you know like changing your energy, and you were saying that like you started off uh, like you would feel you would have like an atmosphere of feeling one sort of type of way, and then you turned that into a positive way. You know what I'm saying? You killed. You said you killed. You forgiving is killing. You know what I'm saying? You kill it like it's, I'm it's, it's it's beyond it's beyond just our whole spiritual level. Like it's I mean it's it's beyond like us like what we can see physically. I'm trying to tell you what we feeling is not just like little things in our head and chemicals. I'm trying to tell you it's it's deeper than that. I'm I, I feel like it's deeper than that. Like the whole atmosphere. Like 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 it's it's something like. It's, it's from generations passed down. Like, it's, it, it, it just don't make... Like, I'm trying to tell you, like, I feel like it's something in the Bible about it. I heard my family talk, say something about it, but I never got fully versed on it. But I heard it's things like spirits and stuff like that, that real life create atmospheres of aggression. You know what I'm saying? It'd be your, you and your wife either back and forth and all the time, and it's like, it's just all t types of aggression. You get what I'm saying? And then, like... It'll be on one of y'all, then the next one cool because it's not on them at the moment, and then they just like, what the hell? And then they jump onto the next and then that one, and it caused confusion. I'm trying, it, it, it's, hey, it's G -Man. It killed that jump. That's what I'm trying to say. That's that's what I, my bad. I'm, I'm, I'm talking too much, but you said nah, you killed nah. it. saying you was real about the killing, like mm -hmm. you, you get that jump out of there and the atmosphere changed because once that jump is gone, you you clear your mind for to allow. You know what I'm saying? Wisdom and, and, and peace. And like he said, he said it took him to when he was older. Maybe his atmosphere, what, what was around him, wasn't right at the time. And then eventually he, he got them things and he bit the, the fruit of wisdom. You know what I'm saying? And he was with that zone. And she stayed with him. You know what I'm saying? And it was, you know what I'm saying? Now he got that. You know what I'm saying? That's let what I'm just, that's with the killer. Let me say something real quick. Go for it. The only, the only being 
on this earth that truly cares about your issues and your problems are the walls in your room. Your family, your best friend, your girlfriend. They don't give a fuck. They have their own problems that they got to worry about. And they listen to your problems. And they listen to your problems in order to say to themselves, wow, my life isn't as bad as this person's. I think that's, that's a possibility. I think that's, that's a poss- I think that's a possibility. I, I do not think at all that that is the only possibility of what is real, though. Hold on, please. Let me speak to Omar. Omar, Go bro, please, it. nah, don't don't feel like that, bro. Please don't. It's it's people out here that genuinely care, bro. I promise I you, bro. Because really th- what you said. No, li- listen to me, please, real quick, bro. Like, really resonate with me, bro. I know you've been drinking, but if, if this were really coming out of you, and this how you feeling right now, I feel like that's what you're feeling right now, but I don't want you to even feel like that right now, I bro. Like, I got you. For real, it's not like that, bro. It's people out here that... Because when you're saying this, bro, and I'm hearing it, and I'm trying... And I always try to connect with what somebody's saying, and I'm trying... Like I said, I take it as all facts, so, but what you're telling me, I'm like, nah, ho, bro, I can't even take that as fact, because I don't feel like that, bro. You t- when y'all talk to me on here, bro, I, only, I, ain't, even never, I ain't never seen and shook y'all hand, bro. But I see y'all in here, and I and I talk to y'all. And when some of y'all be saying like, "Oh, this, this, that, and the third, I be like, "Damn!" Like, like my man slip, slipstream. I real live when he said, "Man, I fucked up my money. I ain't even got the jump for the jump real quick because he was messing around the last night." I don't even care that he went to the strip club. I don't give a fuck that he spent money. All could have been drugs. But if he said, "I need," I, I ain't got the cash on me right now. And what he said wasn't for no fuck shit. I'm like, man, what's your cash at, bro? I, t- I don't even know slip in real yeah, life. This is true. This so is true. And I ain't even got bread. You know what I'm saying? I got to get diapers for the Rick night. Rick told me about this. Right, right now, I'm going to fuck with my mans real quick. You know what I'm saying? It's people out here that care, bro. I promise you, bro. No, I get it. I get it. I understand that. But mm. it's, rare. it's rare. And it's no more than seven people. And well, the I, fact that you... No and that's what I like slipping on you. Oh, go ahead. I but the, the fact that you... A problem... But my, my bad. You want to go to jail? No, please, please, please. The self, the fact that you self realize that is a problem, though, Omar, bro, means you need to real life cut people out your life. You feel like even like that. Oh bro. yeah, bro. Listen, Bring these listen, problems listen, to them, bro. Because look, it, you're right, let though, let me bro. Tell you, G-Bear, you're, you're, so quick, so quick, it, they can be around each other. You know what I'm saying? It is people like I that. Let's, you. Let them just have it. For real, for real. G-Bear, let me say right. something. Let me say something. Let me say something. Uh-huh. So I was uh, born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts. Okay, that is the worst place on the planet. It's worse than Pakistan, Afghanistan. Now, obviously, that's an exaggeration. It's not it true. To, but I want to explain to you guys how horrible this place is. So, basically, Boston is a place where, like, uh, if you're happy, no one likes you. Right? So, I'm from a place where it's very cool to be miserable. Mm-hmm. Right? Everybody's, like, at the park. They drink your 40s. They're like, yo, bro, kid, I, my fucking... Ah, uh, kid, she got cancer. Oh shit, kid, yeah, kid, my boy got jumped last mm. week. Kid, he's in the hospital. Oh, bro, kid, all this shit. So that's where I'm from. Mm. And there was a lot of gangs, and everyone was, wanted to join a gang. Um, all, all that, all that gabagoo. I was in gang shit too when I was a young buck. Mm. Stupid shit. Anyway, um. What I learned was uh, I lived there for 24 years. Me and my roommate, Infinite Beats, one of the greatest producers in human bis- uh, excuse me, human history, uh, he-, he called me one day because he looked outside his window and there was all snow. He's like, fuck this shit. And he called me. He's like, dude, do you want to move to L.A.? And I was like, bro, fuck it. Let's move to L.A. <laughs> we both had money saved up. We packed all their shit in this car. I don't have a license. So he drove. And this kid's a murderer. Like, this kid drove, like, through Iowa. Mm-hmm. We had to pull over because it was a snowstorm. One of the best places of our trip, where? Nebraska. I want to go back to Nebraska right now. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful. We stayed yeah. at a hotel. Let me tell you. Let me tell you how much I love Nebraska. We stayed at a hotel. Oh, hey guys, you know what? We're getting way the fuck off topic. So unless this is related specifically to what does or doesn't help or not, like the question was, what is supportive to community mental health versus what is not? You know. So I'm not trying to to, to derail you. Oh, here's 
No, 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 no. Please, please, please. I, I apologize. I was going on a biography. Yeah, you were, in you were going on a little bit of a tangent question. there. But you were growing a memoir. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. And I, I certainly do. It's a great story, but that's for you. Know, that's and for I'm sorry. I was getting it. In there too. I was kind of like, oh, well, hold on, where my snacks set? I was kind of like, oh, <laughs> now, hold on, let's not get off topic. The last again, thing bad. I want to say, Legit, is Nebraska was the best experience on my whole trip from Boston to LA. Mm -hmm. I had more fun in Nebraska than I had in Las Vegas on the way to LA. Mm -hmm. So, shouts out to Nebraska. I'm going to go back to Nebraska very soon out of respect because they, they were there when I was homeless, technically, mm -hmm. right? And my boy, we were like, yo, let's drive from Boston to L.A. and just figure shit out. So when we were in L.A., we were homeless for like two weeks. Not really. We were staying at hotels, but we were... On the edge. We had no home. On the edge. <laughs> On the edge, yeah, yeah. Fuck that, that shit. So Into the Wild, Legit is actually streaming Into the Wild tonight yeah. at 7 p.m. Into the Wild is a more gangster version of what me and my boy did, right? Uh, Into the Wild is about somebody leaving their whole ball sack behind. And just being like, hey, I don't want this life. I'm about this life. And that's what happened. At 26 years growing up in Boston, think about the city of Boston. How close-minded, how stupid everyone is, how many fights everyone. Bro, I got a broken nose. I got a fractured orbital bone. Uh, a few months before I came out here, I fought a heavyweight, and I weigh about 160. Uh, I took him down. I did the wrestling, but you can't wrestle someone who also trained out of the same person that trained to wrestle you. So it was someone that I knew. He was good at wrestling. and So what happened is uh, he had me. I had him in full guard. He was oh, on, bro. I he love was it. on top of me in the street like this. He was on top of me, right? So I was like, oh, shit. He hit me. Go ahead with that drug like, in, bro. Get the fuck out. Like, yeah. Boom, Yo, boom. So, hey, so, so, Omar, I'm just I'm just curious again. What does this have to do with what is supportive of community mental health versus what is not? Because I'm, I'm trying to trying to make sure everybody gets a chance mm -hmm. to, to add to this, this important topic. Because I want to end soon, right? Because we're at the last question, which was what is supportive? Uh, what is supportive? To community mental health right, versus right, what is right, not, right. you know. I uh, can say something. I, I don't want to. I don't want to cut anyone off, though. If anyone want to say something, please feel free. It just sounds like you're just you're sharing stories. I'm not quite sure exactly what's on the topic of that. Which you know, I want to be. Mm -hmm. I want to give you space to share, but no, no, no. It, it's it's understandable. And with every story that I've said and everything that I've said, it all boils down to the fact that mental health is in the eye of the beholder, mm. right? So some people feel that these experiences that are traumatic define them and make them stronger and better humans. Mm -hmm. Other people feel that these traumatic experiences ruin them and create all the anxiety that they face in their life. So it's totally how you adapt to traumatic experiences in regards to mental health. Because mental health is all about how good you can lie to yourself. So you can lie to yourself in the sense that you say, oh, I haven't been through these experiences. I don't need to worry about them. Or you can lie to yourself and say, I've been through these experiences. I can chug through life even through them and I can ignore them. But at the end of the day, everything that happened to you in your childhood that you did not enjoy affects you to this point in time. And you lie to yourself and you say that I've gone through it. But that's just your ego trying to cover the fact that you're a deeply torn apart human being. Yeah, the ego does be lying. The ego does be lying. The, the ego's great. The ego, do you you think you're talking right now? That's not you talking. Uh, that's your ego. Rainy's got his hand up. Rainy, what's I, up? Rainy, mm. Rainy, spit. Again, I I'd hate to act like a real ass bitch when I'm just a pussy. No, I don't think that's say what's that. happening. I think that's what's happening, right? We're we're no. finding something out about you, and you're like, yeah, and we're learning what you like and what makes you like living, like fucking Nebraska, like into the wild, like Nebraska. freedom and shit, liberty. Wild, you know, th yeah. these are principles that aren't just ego. They're like, 
They're, they're principles and values. But I gotta stop shaking. But I'll get into my point, which is that um, I think I, f- I forgot who was having this fucking conversation with. Pretty sure it was on the Qboard Discord, um, just being toxic in the wasteland. But we were arguing so hard about like what science really was. Mm. And I, I got and I, so I have two points for you that that might that might make you not like me anymore, even nah. if that's already not no, case. Kids. Come on. So I'll start off with the hard one. Every every perception you have of reality is a lie that you fabricated. I agree. Because you don't know reality. Because your eyes I can't don't. actually get light. It's a it's it's a I'm not saying it's an illusion, but it's a no, it's a course. built perception. It's a yeah, generated it's, image. Everything everything I've said since the moment I joined the stream was a pure opinion and not a hundred percent fact. Hey, can I say something on what Randy said? Her facts are built on opinions. Yeah, go ahead, Jupiter. This is true. This yeah, is true. I mean, can you can you legit? Yeah, please, please. Hmm? Go yeah, ahead, I, feel, I feel like what Randy said was yeah, like it's true. Like I mean, not not necessarily. I feel like what we see and of course and what we touch and like this is this is physically here. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah, yeah. More, no, I know, no, I'm saying, but I do feel like there's <laughs> more. Like he said that the eyes cannot see. You know oh, what I'm saying? Like man. it's a whole lot more that we can't see that and that we cannot perceive. You know what I'm saying? Like as a kid, you don't get it. You get older, shit. You might not get into you out your body. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it's. <laughs> I feel like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like that. You know I'm, I'm sorry, like... G-Bert. Until you're out of your body. Are you out your body? Yeah. You when you well, float you above, even, you're not even dead. Maybe you ain't even got to be dead. Maybe you just straight up leave your body. You know? Maybe you just having a dead-ass good fucking nap. And that, Nah, it, uh, you think you sleeping and you think you watching yourself <laughs> sleep. Nah. All right, y'all. Let's, 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 let's focus up. We're, uh, we're, actually we're running up on two hours <laughs> now. And I wanted to oh, give sorry. everybody a chance to uh, close out by speaking on something that they want to put out into the community around your perspective around community mental health, right? So we're going to wrap this up. So yeah. each one of you be like, this is what I want to put out to the world around this topic, mm-hmm. all right? And I want to start with, uh, I want to start with mm-hmm. Traxis, or Taxis, if that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, this this might be a, a minute, so bear with me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think it's important to recognize that a lot of what was said today was spoken in absolutes. Everybody, <laughs> everyone, always, never, etc. Mm-hmm. And that that can be a dangerous mentality. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it can be. It can feel very real to the person that feels that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, in, in a lot of way, perception is reality. Mm-hmm. It's real to you <laughs> at least. Mm-hmm. You know. I've been there. I know that. Mm-hmm. Um, y- youth and exuberance often gives us a, a conviction that feels very real and, and about it, it, and, it, and we speak in absolutes. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you grow older and become, you, you experience more life, you realize how finite almost everything is. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that the dichotomy there between absolutes being incredibly rare and infinity being real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm going way off here. Uh, there are real people out there that love. And if you haven't experienced that, anybody out there, if you haven't experienced that, I am so sorry. You have my deepest appreciation and sympathy. That's a hard road to walk. Yeah, I've been there too. Yeah. But I also realized it doesn't have to be that way. Facts. And the reason I know it doesn't have to be that way is because I can be different. And one person can change things. One person becomes two people, becomes four people, and on and on. The way to kill the darkness is to expose it to light. The way to get rid of it. It's real. It exists. I acknowledge that. And that's why we have to expose it. That's why we have to love. That's why we have to come up alongside each other and sometimes just be there. You may not even, that person may not even want you to do anything. But when you are just walking beside them, that gives them strength. Mm -hmm. And that encourages the people around you 
to do the same. They see what happens. You don't even have to show it off. People will notice. You can even try to hide it, and people will notice the light in your life. Yeah, you can. That's that's a good point. <laughs> it's real. Yeah. It's real. You get to a you get to fact. a certain point where you have to be able to hide it. Otherwise, people will just start getting in your face for no reason. Like just you're just minding your own yeah. business, and people start gravitating toward you. For real. Absolutely. Wait, wait, wait. I just well, want to tell Mafia. Right. We're doing closing no, thoughts. No, 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 we're doing, no, no, we're doing no, no, closing no, no, thoughts. No, no, nope. closing it's his, thoughts. It's his turn. It's his turn. No, 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 no. I'm telling. I'm telling Omar. That we're doing closing thoughts. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I got okay, you. I got you. Taxes. Okay. Um, this is a very real concept to me. I was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer mm. about 10 months ago. Mm. I am still currently unemployed. Mm. Um, I was laid off about three months before COVID, so I wasn't eligible for any of the COVID assistance aside from the stuff that everybody got for their families. Mm. I live. I worked in a very toxic work environment for seven years. Yes, sir. I was suicidal every day. Same here. Right? And when I was laid off, it was one of the best days of my life. Me too. Second, like, like only, only getting married and the birth of my children and my baptism are more mm. important to me. Mm. I have something else. Can you feel that? You no, know? I feel that. Uh, <laughs> Sir. When I was laid off, I took my profit sharing. I took my retirement. Mm. I took my... Um, but right I, there. I took, I right. took the severance. Hold oh, up. Oh, hold oh, up. Oh, I took the severance that I got, <laughs> and I put that into starting my own business. Mm. Tens of thousands of dollars. Yes, sir. And... Your hands are as well. Yeah, and, then, yeah, yeah. and then COVID hit, and that all crashed. Gone. I know. That's the two. What? No, what? Omar, uh, Omar, Omar, hold on. We're not. We're not. Then, stop talking, Omar. please. We're stop not, interrupting, please. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put you on mute. I apologize. Then, Omar, then we. Then we all had that year of COVID. Then we all had that year of COVID. Without all of that happening, I never would have gotten my cancer diagnosed. I was on the verge of stage four, spreading to my other organs. It was actually stage three B. It had started to spread to nearby lymph nodes. Okay. That 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 cancer changed my life. The people around me, the people closest to me, my church, people people that have no reason, no reason to love me, according to a, lo a lot of what has been said here today. No reason. They literally paid my bills. They paid for my house payment. They brought us food. They literally kept the roof over our heads and took care of us when, we, when I couldn't take care of myself. They are still reaching out to us and taking care of us with zero expectation. I didn't believe it would happen before that that could happen or that it, that it was real until it did. It does exist. Mm -hmm. It existed for me at least. And that is real mm -hmm. okay and because of all of that i have chosen to do things differently and love other people and help it's a it's a it spreads like a virus mm -hmm. but it's a a um it's a good thing it's a healthy thing and that's what's going to change us. That's what's going to change our society. That's what's going to change our world. That's what's going to improve our community mental health. Mm -hmm. And you can start doing it for selfish reasons. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you, if you keep doing it, those selfish reasons will disappear. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. all I've got to say. I, I, would, Thank you. I would add to that point, too, that... Um, Sometimes it may one in my experience on this path, because this is a path I think that I think we could talk about it being path like, right? <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. There were times where I didn't realize I was being selfish about this that I later came to learn, oh, I was doing this for selfish reasons because I had gotten to the point where I got a new level of sure. understanding and 
right? And it, but even then, being kind, Absolutely. being kind to yourself and being kind to others is the crucial part. Um, uh, Omar, I'm going to uh, disconnect you for flashing that, and we're going to move forward. Um, so, Johnny, uh, I'd like to go to you now. Closing statements on the topic. Yeah, homie. Mean, so. <clears throat> We're in the middle of the second psychedelic revolution that was started by Timothy Leary and Ram Das in the 60s. The entire mental health game in the United States is going to change, in the world for that matter, because of psychedelics and their introduction. Things like, And also this includes things like MDMA, ketamine, a wide range of psychedelics. Specifically to me, the very dear and near to me is DMT. The oral dose of DMT, the ayahuasca and pharmaloska, as is administered, is a very, very powerful, very powerful antidepressant. In fact... Uh, I'll give you a brief a brief example. Uh, I was depressed for three days. I was sleeping 20 hours a day. I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't eating. I wasn't washing. I was consumed by darkness. I said, fuck this no more. I had this medicine, and this is the first time I'm going to use it to make the depression stop, and I took it. 90 minutes after I took my dose, I was peaking. I had tears of joy rolling down my face. I was connected to consciousness, and I was well. And here I sit. This is this is like eight weeks later, and I'm not depressed, and I'm still well. Right? Psychedelics are, are, are mental health tools, and the whole game's going to get changed. We are a very sick country. But wellness is on its way. Relief is on its way, brothers. I promise you it is. Yeah. Is that it? I mean, that, I'm not yeah, like... Yeah, that's all I have to say. I, I mean, Thank not, you. Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm not going to cut you off because I want to dovetail on that. No, uh, I agree. not at all. I agree. Not at and all. There's a, a couple things I wanted to speak on specifically about the topic that you just brought up because it's near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. One is... There have been people that have been carrying that reality and that wisdom for a long time, right? Not just in this country, but you can trace this all the way back to cultures that are Linear. literally like tens of thousands of years old, right? Um, and the, 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 the forces at hand that are around what you're talking about are very uh, conflicting, right? Because we're coming from a, a paradigm where the, it's like you would be, you, you could have your life destroyed for, for participating in that, let alone even speaking on it. You know what I mean? Um, so there's a, there's a lot of like mysticism and BS around this conversation that people project on it. Uh, and, and the truth of the healing of psychedelics with wisdom, with wisdom, right? Uh, is, is quite powerful. Um, also, it's not for everybody, right? Uh, and, and also, there are ways to achieve psychedelic healing that have nothing to do with taking in uh, psychedelics. Meditation, exercise, sex, dance, all kinds of things can lead to the same state. I just wanted to put that in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, did you want to add anything else, Johnny? No, thank you, brother. Thank you for having the podcast. I love your energy, and I do love you, man. I want you to be well. Thank We're going to spend more time together. Thank you for, thank yeah. you for putting, that, yeah. putting this out there. Thank, thank you. All right, closing statements. G-Bear, what do you want to lay on the world? Okay, so I'm um, I'm going to start off with uh, just the whole the topic of it all. I feel like, yeah, you know, it is. It, it, it is um, I need to turn my light back on because that's messing me up. All right, now, um, yeah, I feel like, you know, as the community, if we are going to try to come together when we want to solve this problem and tackle it, you know what I'm saying? I feel like we need to assess the problem at the root. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, you can't just keep pulling the plan out at the top if we keep chalking it up to money. That is an issue. Money, you know what I'm saying? Edu you know, but that's that's where you go through it. You go through education, what is needed for to for proper education. It's, it's a lot more deeper. We got to understand what we lacking, what we really lacking, because money is definitely one thing, but Money is something that can be made. You know what I'm saying? So for real, for real, money in your hand don't really like, I feel like that don't really do nothing. You know what I'm saying? To just give, to, to throw a fish to somebody ain't nothing. You really got to teach them how to uh, uh, fish themselves, but not even just so much as fish themselves. It's the, it's the, it's the fact of the matter of the, the tools. A lot of people just do not have the tools at the, like, like they don't have the tools. You know what I'm saying? And when you don't have already, you don't go to try to get tools. You know what I'm saying? So, you you just you just get you got you get what you need to get done around you. You know what I'm saying? So and it's need it's like it, like I said, mindset. The, I think it's, as a whole, mindset needs to come. But like I said, we need to figure out the root of the problem. So 
if any everybody can sit back and realize and realize what has happened and what can be done and what was taken or what is like we will figure out we can figure out how to lift up the mental health of everyone as a community because like you that's like you said it's on a mindset we got to think better but closing statements i respect you legit and i apologize for if i derailed a little bit i feel like you know what i'm saying i i, I don't i don't want to usually do that on the show that's that's my fault but i respect you i love you bro and johnny i respect you for real bro like real talk i like i really respect you like it's like like on some grown man sh- like like you as a grown like i ain't saying like i'm on grown like i respect you on some like you know like i bang with that you ain't legit like y'all come y'all come yeah. when y'all speak i take heed because I, I i like to hear like thank you brother hey y'all know what i'm saying and yeah thank you for those kind words thank you very much for that mm, y'all take care though that's my closing hell yeah so uh to dovetail off something you said just i, I just want to boost what you said <clears throat> You, you, you specifically mentioned getting to the root of things and that really got my hair standing on end because the etymology of the word radical is radish or root. Mm. Mm. Um, and so oftentimes when someone is getting to the root of a thing, you're going to mm-hmm. be challenged by people. People are going to go, why are you bringing my attention to this, you, you radical you? <laughs> and I just mm-hmm. wanted to put, put that out there in, in preparation for energies that might come in the future, because when you start getting mm-hmm. to the bottom of things, and, and if and it's effective, you're gonna see some you're gonna see some bounce back, some, some pushback. Mm-hmm. Um, Can I dovetail that, please? And I know why you want to know why I feel like in my my own personal is is like it's because it's like as 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 everyone is a p. People we are taught and we are governed a certain type of way as a society. You see it in, in history. You see how propaganda. And I need someone just proper. That's just the way as a whole. You know how like national nationalism. How how everyone is a na- nation. How our minds kind of like you know we accept things and how we grow to like accept things. And I feel like when you try to go back, it's as if you're trying to. They a lot of people would assume that you're trying to find the problem because they do they accept what is already around them. So they feel like what are you? What are you trying to do? What, what, on a problem are you trying to they feel like you're creating a problem is what i feel like and you but that but, but that's a smart thing to do it's always good to root back but yeah also uh one of the things that you pointed out about you brought up money and being like you know the, the root of things and then you mentioned that there's more than just that right and i think a way to sum that up that i really agree with is that when we're doing these explorations of getting to the root of our trauma so that we can create healing we can't really tactically focus on any one thing because it ain't any one thing right like we're dealing with Mm. centuries of trauma and none of that is just about any one thing and we're going to have to expand our capacity to take in a lot of different information that's related to this to collate all the different dimensions that we're all sharing around this right it ain't about one thing Mm. but there are definitely big potent causal pillars to these that we can address um Closing statements, Rainy, lay it on us. What do you want to tell the world about this? I well, uh, I want to actually dovetail because I appreciate G Bear. I mean, I feel like Shane kind of did this thing where can we talk about real stuff, guys? And then and then you know, I went on with the whole "you are lying to yourself by perceiving reality" because <laughs> an abstraction is inherently abstract. So the writing I have, um, it's a, it's two things. The first one is like hopeful optimism going into toxic optimism, mm. right? Which goes into toxic academia, mm. and then I'm still missing a bridge. So what I'm asking the community is to help me bridge toxic academia with hopeful nihilism. Why don't we make this our next podcast uh, topic? Oh, you know, or, well, or because that'd not... be too radical. That that <laughs> we, we might have to warm up to that. Yeah. that's why well, either way I, either way i would like to as we close this up i want to invite you all to come back as we continue this process because the whole goal of this podcast is is healing right like this isn't about an episodic you know you know p- pointing out or you know just like randomly looking for clicks right this is an ongoing conversation the last conversation we had in the podcast last week was solidarity what is solidarity mm. right so you know we went oh, from we oh, went from solidarity I, to community mental health 
right? And so it, it, my, my, my ask, if you guys would have this, is that if you guys can continue to return, the process of doing this will show how this shit's all connected, right? And then what, what, uh, what, um, what Shane brought up around not talking and doing, that's where we organize in the Discord, right? That's the end point, right? That's that's the no, that's the starting point because we're oh, uh, we're, we're we're in a we're, we're yeah. using a medium and and this is I feel like really this gets unfairly like like people are like oh what are you gonna do about this you're just talking on the internet like <laughs> what else could Sorry. we be doing on the internet right now like if I actually was gonna, uh, if, if, start. if I was gonna uh, go do something about this I would have to get off the internet so we can acknowledge that. Being on the internet is an aspect that literally only involves talk. And then when we're done talking, that's when we go to the other container, which is our action and organizing container, which for the the purpose of this medium is going to be the Discord, right? And from the mm -hmm. Discord, we can organize and schedule things, get get the, the momentum needed to start getting something rolling that has practical benefits. And that, that will come. It will come, mm -hmm. right? So I want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank everybody in chat for coming. I have a tremendous amount of hope with the the, the beauty and love that I see here. I want to throw out a, a, a love and honorable bunch mention to Omar, who I think was struggling with some things when he was in here. And I want to I want to put it out there for us and the world to recognize that when we are all struggling with suffering, it's going to come up, especially when we're talking about love, right? And my mm -hmm. and I, I had to put up a boundary. I had to put up a boundary with Omar. And that boundary was not an excision from the community. It was simply a boundary in the moment. And I invite Omar to like step into the conversation of love with us, whatever that looks like. And anybody else out there, if you feel, if you're hearing this and you're like, fuck this shit, I hate this shit. I don't like it. I don't believe in it. Then, then let us challenge you, right? You know, but we're going to, but we're going to have boundaries. We're going to have strong, healthy boundaries around that. You feel me? Um, I would like to put something in the chat. Where should I put it for next week? Um, why don't you put it in the Discord? Put it in the Discord. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm like, like, like void screaming. Um, well, why don't you put, like, put it like in? It's a uh, void put, yeah, put it in void screaming for now because uh, okay, okay. we don't have to get anal about we'll exactly how we execute things unless that's really important to the health of the process. No, well, you, you'll see what I mean by void screaming. All right, perfect. Perfect, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna I, I I'm gave gonna, you. I'm gonna. I'm I gonna, gave you the. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna. Cut I'm, gonna the show. I'm gonna end this ah. now. Uh, I'm gonna end this now because it's been two and a half hours and my brain is full and I need to go out and discharge this into the trees. <laughs> so I love y'all and I really look forward to having y'all on again. If you guys want to show up next Sunday, uh, it would be great to have you. And if you want to talk about topics in the Discord that we can flow into next Sunday, not just topics, but you know. As we're doing this, we're going to come up with techniques that are going to help to make this more efficient. So let's talk about Discord so we can instantiate that in our next conversation. You feel me? Mm -hmm. All right, sir. Yes, sir. I love you all dearly. All right. Thanks, Jeet. I'll talk Better to guys, you guys. It was nice, man. Yeah. All right. Did we man? Peace. Uh, wait, is this still going? Nope. I'm ending in three, 